Oh no! You're failing so miserably. I'll listen to the poor. It's good. I'm not, I'm not wearing headphones. I, I can't hear. <laughs> Hello and welcome to Flicks on a Six. I'm one of your hosts, Anthony Costanza. With me, forever and always, the man, the myth, the last Gungan. Alessandro Miles. <laughs> Say hello, Al. I don't want to On this week's show, <laughs> the force, the whole force, and nothing but the force, except this beer. Al, what are we drinking? <laughs> uh, we're drinking Southern Tier, uh, Citra Hop Live. It's a pale ale. I got this because you said in a previous episode that you really enjoyed Citra Hops. That's a fact. And a beer. So, uh, Do Gungans like Citra Hops? I wouldn't know. <laughs> it's bright, refreshing, and loud. Just like me. <laughs> I like it. Uh, Citra Hop Live is bright, refreshing, and loud. Wow, look at that. It's the first line on the thing here, too. We cranked this pail up to 11 by adding a generous amount of Citra Hops. With that in mind, we wanted the label to reflect the feeling of live music. Cool. Live pairs. Great. Well, that was weird. I didn't expect that to go that way. Um, just like this movie. Mm. Live pairs. Great with... Toe tapping or head banging to your favorite band on stage. Cool. Five point five percent alcohol by volume. I like that. That is citrusy. Yeah, I like these beers. I'm a, I'm a I, it, it's a fact. I'm a fan of Citra Hops. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's been proven. I like the. I, I was gonna say album art because you got the live stuck in my head. Yep. I like the bottle art. Yeah. It's a little. Uh, it's vibrant, the blue and like the um, and that like lime green color that's going on there. It's it's pretty sweet, and uh, I like the, the the use of the microphone. Hold hold this up. Use this for our podcasting recordings. Nice. I don't think it'll work as well, but no. Uh... <laughs> we talk hello. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is cool. They they give you on the uh, the website here like a whole like bunch of little uh, things to go along with the beer here. So it says light copper in color. The fermentation is with an ale yeast, four types of malt, and four varieties of hops. The citrusy hops, sweet malt, and pine is the aroma. Mm. The flavor, the hops dominate. it was just the tree. <laughs> no, no, no. Christmas recording. <laughs> this is our Star Wars Christmas special. <laughs> yeah, I guess we're going to have to wait until next year for the Christmas yeah. special, probably. <laughs> the uh, flavor, the hops dominate, then mingle mm. with malts and finish dry. Low to moderate bitterness. 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 <laughs> Give it to bitterness. <laughs> yeah, I slept like three hours last night. Yeah, <laughs> if that. Um, it's light bodied. Serving temperature should be 42 degrees. You should drink it fresh. And it's available year round. Well done. Have it with steaks and burgers. Good steaks and burgers. Well, we had a burger for lunch. We did. That's pretty uh, good choice there. It didn't even, didn't even see this coming. It's, it's awesome. pretty tasty beer. That's great. Uh, as you, you might have looked at our feed and noticed that we already have a Star Wars episode out. That's just our quick reaction. That was us grabbing a beer. All a bit, spoilers. It's delirious. Yeah, it was, well, like we said, I think we even said it in there. It was like 2.30 in the morning. Yep. Just nonsense. This is our, uh, we've had, we've had a little time to, to, to settle down. And by a little time, I mean the three hours that I was talking about where there was sleep. And then we got up and Watch we it went off it again. <laughs> and I'm now prepared to go a little deeper. I did catch up on a tiny bit of sleep during the movie. Probably missed about th- three, to, three to five minutes of movie. <laughs> there was one minute where I heard the snore come out and I just elbow jabbed you. <laughs> there was a conscious snore because I, I felt the snore happen, <laughs> was still kind of watching the movie, and tried to turn my head and tell you, no, don't elbow me, as you were turning to elbow me. <laughs> <laughs> it was like in slow motion. <laughs> no, I'm just so tired. Ah, uh, yeah. yeah. I was tired. I'm still tired. So we uh, we saw it today in IMAX 3D, uh, the 3D portion of it, not by choice. I I'm just not into it. Actually, I, you know the weird thing is is this one it, as the movie went on, I found it was less annoying. It wasn't bad. It was like there's a lot of times where like there was nothing going on that would cause it to be obnoxious and in your face. Right, but at the same time. It's wholly unnecessary. Like it doesn't. It just adds a little extra texture. Do you think so? I don't. I don't get anything out like of you it. You just notice like scenes, especially where there's like a lot of things or people in the room. Like you notice that it looks more like how you if you're looking into the room. Sure. Would Not that I you have no notice? depth on the other things. You know what I mean, but it's just like 
I don't. I'm not. As, I'm not as. I don't have as much of an issue with it as I used to when they used to do it, where it's like it was the arm reaching out like to right. punch and like that was the thing, you know, stuff yeah, like that. Like one That's scene. annoying. They don't do that really anymore, so yeah. it doesn't really bother me. It it bothers me because it's un it is uncomfortable eye strain to watch the movie. It can be. I I, I, I wouldn't know because I didn't have it. my contacts in anyway. So yeah, that's actually where it clashes with me sometimes. They kind of end up out of phase. Okay. Um, I see better with contacts, obviously. Although with I'm talking about movie screen, I'm not gonna not see any of it. Mm-hmm. I'm not blind. I just have like I have weird eyes. We're not gonna talk about it. Uh, <laughs> I'm not blind. We're all getting into it. I can drive. It's, it, doesn't, it does not make me a danger to drive. I've never gotten in an accident. Like, um, but uh, yeah, I don't know. Actually, there's one scene that I thought was a lot cooler, um, which we'll talk about post spoilers. So okay. Try and remind me. There was one right. scene that I actually was having seen it once, not in 3D, and once in 3D. I was like. That's pretty cool in 3D. Okay, I, it, for me, it's just I, I don't I don't need that little extra layer. It doesn't do anything for me. It, it, it takes away from the experience for me because I'm I I'm actively aware of it and it bothers me, um, especially when you have a crappy pair of 3D glasses like I had today, which I didn't mention to you yet. But the left lens was slightly warped, so there was a oh, mine was fun. There was like a light refraction that was like popping up like there's like a, a low <laughs> glare in the bottom left so like it took me a little while to adjust it but I, I did like the old person looking over the glasses thing like I put it down really low on my nose and then lean my head back and I avoided it that way nice. <laughs> but See, uh they suck <laughs> I hadn't seen anything in 3D in a while but then recently I saw this and I saw Justice League in 3D mm-hmm. this annoyed me way less than Justice League did yeah I could see that because the, I mean, that movie is also over the top processed. I mean, I know that the majority of this movie is CG, but like like backgrounds and stuff like that. But yeah, um, yeah I can see that the Justice League is is very is in your face a lot yeah. of the time. So I can see that being an issue. I forget what movie it was that I saw in 3D that I, <laughs> halfway through it I was just like, there's just nothing, there's nothing good about like there's nothing there's no ad benefit here. And I was like, what, what does this look like without the glasses? <laughs> I took them off and I was like, took them on, took them off. Put them on. Is this movie in 3D? <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't. I just took them off and I watched the rest of the movie without them on. Works. <laughs> but I tried it for this one and it, it was very, very fuzzy. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, that sounds right because I took them off to look at. I know you hate me looking at my phone, but I turned the the, the brightness all the way down. Monster. There, I was getting texted by like there was I was yeah. a group message that was going off. There was like four other uh, separate people texting te- me. Texts can wait. I had like fifteen. I just want to make sure there was nothing important. That's all it was. Uh, I wasn't texting back. What are you gonna do? In the next two hours. Well, I mean, if it was something super important, we, we would have left. Probably. <laughs> but yeah, I agree. I don't particularly... I, I'm not going to go out of my way ever to see anything in 3D. No. I, I actively try to avoid it. Yeah, I do um, too. I'm glad. Uh, but as always, like so, especially with a movie like this that I'm so excited for, I'm, that's not going to be the first way I see it. I have to see the 2D version. And also it. the other thing is, having seen it normal, it was kind of cool to see it in a different way. Yeah, I didn't. I mean, it's okay. It's okay. I, yeah. I, I, I just, I don't need it. I don't need that shit. No, I don't need, need, that, I don't need that, those, that nonsense in you know, your life. I don't need those fifteen dollar tickets during the matinee for the three D IMAX. Oh, definitely not. You know, it's like something stupid, like nineteen or twenty something. I feel like when it's not matinee, it's, but still, ugh, ugh. Anyway, <sighs> Star Wars. Um, this movie is fantastic. I, I was on a high last night in our little recording you know i'm loving every second of i it. definitely forgot a lot of the stuff we talked about I, so we're gonna yeah. catch some of that here but i had time to like focus on it knowing what scenes are coming and like being able to like to like like look into things a little bit more i stand by my enjoyment of this movie it was i wish i wasn't dozing so much awesome. during the first third of the movie mm. like i saw basically the whole thing but like there was yeah. just like my focus level wasn't high but you know, my my opinion is unchanged. I yeah. very much enjoyed this movie. Yeah, I'm glad. I, I also, I think that's a. It's, I'm, not, it's I'm still a good not ready to like try and slot it in yeah. with the other. I'm not. Movies. I'm not either. I um. But it's. I'm glad that we see this and the other Star Wars movies too. Like we we've seen a handful, twice, right? Seven and this one we saw it twice before yeah. we recorded. Yeah, one we only saw once. Yeah. Um. Just because it gives me a little time, because I know I'm expecting to go in loving it, and I usually I, I'm well. So in both cases so far, I really did. I need that second time to ground me, and no, still stands. Loved it. Yeah, and uh, you got it. If you're listening, if if you're listening to this, you you like what we like most likely. So you or at least know what we like. Or know what we like. So if 
if you do like what we like, get out there. I mean, you've you've seen it. You've you've definitely seen it. Already. Probably it's Thursday of the week after that you're that this is dropping. Yeah, you've seen the movie. Plus, like Christmas is coming up. Like you know, you guys are. Oh, I, well, actually, maybe you're busy. No, but you're gonna be more willing to. Go yeah, to like I, everyone lets stuff slide. Exactly. You know I, mean? <laughs> no, I feel like if you, <laughs> I feel like if you've seen, if you listen to this. You're the person that's already seen it, so we're, we're on the same page. Uh, with that being said, I don't, I don't care to to talk about anything without like with you know um, stepping around spoilers. So let's just should we just lift the veil and not worry about it? Well, do we want to do the other? Oh stuff right, you first? had some you had some 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 notes. But then when we get okay. to movie stuff, yeah, we're not going to do any any like movie descriptions or breakdowns or anything like that before the spoilers because uh, the movie match the hype. There you go. Yeah, that's exactly. that's the pre spoiler exactly talk. Um, I'll try to keep these things like quick. Okay, and then just we'll, as uh, like an update, and then we'll get into the movie itself. Yeah, so, that works. Disney Fox. You guys have all been hearing about it for the past week or so. We've been following that story on the, the show for a while now, and I just thought it would be kind of cool to just give, like, what they're saying is certainly to be done. It seems like the deal is all but done. The FCC has to, um, well, how much trust do we have in the FCC now, right now, but uh, yeah. has to, um, <laughs> we're not getting into that. That would take forever. <laughs> um, they have to approve, make sure it follows antitrust laws, this and that. Um, so Disney is basically absorbing most of 21st Century Fox, which is the TV and movie stuff. Uh, that will not include Fox News yeah. or the main Fox broadcast network, like yep. Channel 5, although some of the shows on there may be subject to this deal. Interesting. Like Gotham? Stuff like that. I don't know if that show mm-hmm. in particular, but stuff like, like Family Guy, stuff like that. that I, could I was end just up... cu- curious about that show specifically because it's DC. Yes. Uh, and uh, FS1, the, the, the national sports channel, is also staying with Fox, which they're, like, restructuring that whole thing and everything. Like, News Corp is redoing all that, spinning it off into a separate new business, I guess. Okay. Um, But so the main part of... uh, So, like, a lot of the regional uh, Fox sports networks, like, the Yes Network is largely owned by Fox. That will now actually be under Disney, I believe, as well as countless other ones, like Fox South, Fox, like, Northwest, Fox Arizona, shit like that, like... Mm -hmm will be under Disney now as well. So it's a big boost to ESPN. Um, and this is also to help them set up the framework for their Disney's um, streaming-only services that they're going to try and unroll in the next couple of years. I think 2019 is when they're trying to roll it out. Right. So, um, I don't know, it just seems like a big deal. Yeah. I'm and curious to see what comes out of it. The valuation, I think, is $52 billion. It's like a stock-only transaction. It's a merger, basically. Well, this, this kind of... Uh, it, oh, wait, no... As a, who has who has Spider Man? <laughs> Spider Man is Sony. Sony, right? So yeah, that's the thing is I haven't seen any one definitive thing saying 100 percent what it is, but basically what this means is X Men will be returning to the fold and all everything X Men associated. Right. So Deadpool two. Ryan Reynolds has been having fun with this on Twitter. I don't know if you've seen any of that I stuff. I haven't. When it was first rumored, there was something about it. he goes, uh, oh, I'm sure that uh, he goes. He said, uh, I wonder what this could really affect. Uh, you know, what? what uh, I'll let you know when I figure out what the fudge is going on. Or something like that. <laughs> That's great. Uh, then there was another one where he said, uh, that when, where it seemed like it was imminent, like a couple weeks ago, it was uh, finally we'll get to see uh, all that sexual tension between Deadpool and, and Minnie Mouse on court or something <laughs> like that. And then the other day when it seemed to be more or less officially announced, um, he put, he like photoshopped a picture of Deadpool uh, looking like he's being like handcuffed and walked out of Disney World by a security <laughs> guard, and it said something along the lines of, "I guess you can't literally blow the Matterhorn." Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! I love it. And uh, and to those of you who are worried about uh, Deadpool and stuff like that, I saw specifically on the call for this, like the conference call for this, uh, Bob Iger basically said, "We don't see any reason why that can't stay." the way it is, yeah. as long as we're telling people on the front end, this is the way it's going to be, yeah. and no one thinks they're walking into Spider-Man, you know, they, they, they know you're walking into Deadpool, that's what's going to be happening. He's basically like, I don't see why he can't right. keep doing that. Yeah, for sure. And that it's even has brought up discussions of them doing basically their own section of the Marvel, where it's like Marvel adult, essentially, not okay. like a porn network. But... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I realized as I said it, like, 
Like that's Marvel a, After Dark. Yeah, Marvel After Jesus. Dark. Marvel Adults. Uh, your neighbor's standing on his back porch, and it looks like he's staring at us through this window. Creepy. <laughs> right? I just saw him he's like, what's about this Marvel Adult? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know that guy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'm sorry. I, I, I shit both of us up. We're not, we're not in the redhead space to move no. past that, right? Uh, but uh, Slightly delirious. Anyway... The idea was there was supposed to be like an R-rated Marvel subsection, sure. essentially, where Deadpool can thrive. Your Logans and Deadpool. Logan, yeah, that's what you yeah. said. Stuff like Logan, Deadpool. There's no reason we can't do that as long as we're like open about that yeah. sort of shit. You know what I mean? I think that's 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 a great way to approach it because like why ru- why ruin this good thing that they they work so hard yeah. to get out there and, and people went, clearly loved like, right like it was so well received like set records for rated R. Like, like box office. I think. Yeah, yeah. That that's it's crazy. Yeah. Ah, uh, that's a, this is cool. I'm, and, and Fantastic Four would be a part of not the Marvel adult, but uh, oh my god, <laughs> no, I'm just doing oh. with it now. Who's <laughs> owning it now? Uh, Mr. Fantastic would probably be popular. Yeah. All that. <laughs> yeah. Just gotta lean into it at this point, yeah. man. Um, I'm excited to see what they do uh, and what what it does for some. Franchises that have tanked <laughs> and see, like the Fantastic Four, yeah, and see what they. Like, I mean, honestly, if they're just like, you know what, we're, of, we're, we're, gonna, we're, we're gonna we're gonna buy this and we're gonna wipe our hands. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, we're done here. Stop trying with this crap. <laughs> like that, I'd be okay with that. Well, the thing is, it basically like they were trying to launch that as a new series mm-hmm. um, under Fox, and it was it's so dead that this gives them a chance that we've talked about what comes after Infinity War with Marvel. Mm-hmm. There's an opportunity for them to recast those characters sure. and fit them into part of the narrative. And if people like them, then they can give them their own movie again. You right. know what I mean? Right. Yeah. We'll see what happens. I'm I'm not worried about this at all. <laughs> no. no, I just thought it was a big story yeah. that we should talk about. Like, it's finally official. We got a little bit more clarity on it. Um, the other thing I wanted to talk about was something called the Lucasfilm Story Group. I don't know if that's an official title anywhere. I don't know if anyone has a with a business card it's, <laughs> but it's basically the brain trust of people at the top of Lucasfilm um, and the reason I brought this up was because there's been a whole lot of Star Wars coverage and I saw an allusion to this in an article I was reading and there was a link to a story from about a year ago it was coincided with the release of Rogue One mm. um, talking about and at the time at the beginning of it it looked like it was like there was like a specific group of people and it seemed like there is kind of a core and then there's kind of like the the ripples of, out of, from it, like other people who are involved to some degree or other in this story group per se. But it's kind of the usual suspects plus a few extra people that you don't know. It's Kathleen Kennedy, J.J. Abrams, Lawrence Kasdan, Michael Arndt, Ryan Johnson, um, Gareth Edwards I, was at the time. I don't know if he's still involved with it. And there's a couple other people like Pablo Hidalgo. You'll see people talk about he's he. I think he's kind of more or less in charge of the stuff that makes it on the page. Okay. So any of the novels, the novelizations, the comics, yeah. I think he's in charge of that stuff and a couple of other ancillary things. <laughs> um, I know I don't know if he is actually part of the story, but I didn't see him mentioned in the story or not. But Dave Filoni basically took over all the TV stuff. He's basically the showrunner of Rebels. Okay. So he's pretty important in all that thing because that's all part of the canon now. And right. It's a, the Clone Wars and that he was involved with both of them. So I think he's kind of part of this inner circle as well. And there's a few other people whose names no one's going to recognize, but I just thought that, that that's encouraging to me, that there is more or less a defined group of, we're the gatekeepers, we make sure, I mean, obviously Disney's got to authorize everything, but basically they were talking about, and one of the reasons I thought this was kind of cool, is they were saying that the way it worked was in a movie like Rogue One, there's someone who worked for Industrial Light and Magic, which is a sub-company that's under Lucasfilm, mm-hmm. it was created by George Lucas while making the other sto- the other Star Wars movies, it was all part of all of that. There's a guy who's not a writer. He's not anything. He's not making movies like that. He's part of the actual effects in all these movies. Had an idea about a movie, and he's a, I mean he's a high, he's an executive in that company, so he can get someone's ear, but not necessarily the type of thing that people who were involved with the story would per se like take right. a meeting for. But he basically gave them the brainchild that became Rogue One. Mm. I thought that was like a kind of That's a cool awesome. story that like, was like they take ideas from people. It's not just yeah. you've picked J.J. Abrams. J.J. Abrams make a movie. It's if you have a story you want to tell in Star Wars, Pitch it. pass it to us, yeah. <laughs> and we'll say yay or nay, or we like the idea of this, but we want to change it, this and that. But the point is, there is a central hub in the same way, actually, it looks like it's even more controlled even than what Marvel does. Right. But it's a similar concept to what Kevin Feige runs over there, yeah. with having this all... Because the way that they did scrubbing out the whole e- the extended universe stuff, 
Star Wars continuity is clean. Mm-hmm. Marvel's has had some. I mean, none of it's like it's gonna break it, but there's timeline issues at times, sure. stuff like that. So this is even more tightly controlled. And admittedly, there's less movies than in right. Marvel now, but they're starting to catch up. Yeah, for sure. Especially with this, I mean, you know, like a year, almost a, well, a yearly turnaround, at, right? Well, it's, much. it's now once a year. It's looking yeah. like um, whereas Marvel's got two or three or four, depending on your year. Yeah, which is out of control. And this is the right call because this is this, uh, that's actually how this I got onto this story. Is I was reading another story about how the pacing of Star Wars releases is going to go if we ever reach a saturation point where people are no longer interested. And the two main driving factors in that is was the last movie that was made by Star Wars a quality movie? If it is, people will definitely show up for the next one. Right. Or, if we start listening to two or three or four movies in a year, is that going to be an issue? As long as they stick to this pace, it shouldn't be an issue, yeah. I would think. And, you know, I, I, I know they're, <clears throat> they're business folks. They're going to figure out you know the best way for them to make the right amount of money out of this stuff. Uh, if it comes down to the point where they're like, we need to take a break because it's not doing performing as well. Like they might return, <laughs> like way more if they wait five more years and then do something new. Um, even if it's not five years, we might get a year yeah. or eighteen months where we don't get something. Some break. Yeah, which is at the end of this run with the three Star Wars stories and the three episode titled stories, we yeah. might get a year or two before that Ryan Johnson I think trilogy that would be, comes I out. I think that would be good. It might be good. You know, because like it gives you time to like to just sit with what we've got. <clears throat> You know, we got plenty of movies that you can go back and rewatch and like go over and enjoy, and start as like if they start to tease things again after a break. Like yeah. it just it, that height. The, there's there's no energy like the energy in a room during the opening opening night of a Star Wars movie. It's so there was cool. applause when the Lucasfilm logo came up. Yeah, the first movie, the first viewing we had here. Yeah. <laughs> There was applause when the lights went down, applause when Lucasfilm came up, applause when Star Wars blasted on the screen, yep. <laughs> applause when it ended, applause at random parts throughout the movie, which were pretty great. <laughs> I'm not surprised at when the title starts, the title music starts, yeah. and I'm not surprised at the ending, you know, but when the Lucasfilm logo <laughs> and the lights are coming down, that yeah. was a surprise. Yeah. <laughs> and even, you know, big scenes in the movies, you're going to kind of expect that sort mm-hmm. of thing to happen as well. For sure. Um... Cool. Any other uh, any other news ish topics? Um, just that I was looking here because I remember that we were discussing it last night, and um, although not on air, um, I do believe that um, Solo, a Star Wars story, is premiering in May May twenty fifth of twenty eighteen. They've stuck with that May date. Twenty fifth. That's crazy. So so Avengers we were discussing. And would there Solo have been a chance? In the same month? Huh? Avengers and Solo in the same month. Um, is Avengers May or June? I thought it was May. It could be June. Because I think um, they've they you know what Black Panther's February. May. They've been a lot of them have been so May, but probably, because they their assumed. release schedule is different this year, I think yeah. they shifted it back. That's I think possible. It's June. That would make more. That would make sense just to give it a, two a, huge a gap. Disney releases yeah. overlapping with being weird. They they'd be competing for each other at the box office. That's what I'm like saying. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> no, that's pretty much it. I think yeah. uh, we can awesome. get a movie. Let's do it. Uh... I, Remember, full spoilers. Full spoilers. 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 spoilers, spoilers. <laughs> um, dude. <laughs> I just, I paused for a second and like replayed the movie beer, like, in, in, like crazy fast forward in my head and it just was like, ah, oh, it's so good. And for whatever reason, this is how, this is how I feel. And, and it's a scene in the movie. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's how I feel about this movie. It's so feel, much fun. You didn't feel insert porg scream because I cannot do it. We, we ah! Where's Damien? We need Damien to do it. <laughs> that scream was great. Um, there's a character in this movie that reminds me of that guy. It's the drunk. It's the little drunk creature. Yes. <laughs> is that? Is he like the same species? No, he was way tinier. Oh, was he? Yeah. Oh, okay. He was like that. That dude was like this big, and this this dude was like this big. No, they were bo- that the guy that screams is not this big. The one who screamed in, in Rogue, Rogue One? One? No, he's a tiny dude. I still feel like he's a foot taller. I don't think so. But anyway, is- that little that little creature with a crazy Einstein hair and like does he have a monocle? What's going he on with that? Monocle. And he's monocles. putting he's putting coins in BB-8. It's so funny. Like it's just just he was playing scene the, that it's playing hysterical. The slots. I love that he's playing the slots on BB-8. Yeah, like, it, it's really funny because there's a lot of beeps and whistles in there. They're curse words. Like yes. <laughs> you know, it's like straight up like fuck, guy, like get off me. <laughs> yes, <laughs> I love it. He's and also like the glass also like there. that alien that is 
doing that is so drunk and so confused why the game isn't working. Is right. Like, there's probably curses in whatever alien right. language he's speaking as well. <laughs> you know what's really funny? We, I don't know if this is the case or not. It's in the opening-ish scene. It's in the opening scenes of the movie where Poe is in the X-Wing and bb eight. BB-8 is the character that said, I have a bad feeling about this. Positive beeps. Positive beeps. Right? <laughs> Come on. It no, had, happy beeps. It, happy beeps. It, it, had, to, it, it had to be him. Right? He had to, that it, had to be what he was saying. I feel like that's a little nod because we didn't did get we, the exact did line. Did we miss... Did we not get a... I have a bad feeling about this? Because there was other things that I noticed. Yeah, Some... we, we didn't get it. I think BB... I think that's the line. I think it's right there. Which is... If that's the case... Bravo. There was I, I don't even remember what it was, but you know the kind of those old standby lines from Star Wars. Uh, I think DJ actually had one when they're breaking into the final room in the uh, the, the desk, not the desk, sorry, the Star Destroyer. <laughs> yeah. He said something uh, during that sequence. I don't remember what it was. I, I think it was there, and I was like, "Oh, that's one of the Star Wars lines. This is a random character to deliver it." What, what did he say? I, I don't remember what the line was now. I, but I remember thinking it like at the time. I was like, "Oh, hey, look, there's that. There's that one line." That's right. <laughs> let's let's jump to him for a second. Yeah, I'm interested about it. I think I had him on here. I uh, I like the character. Yeah, I had heard that it was a relatively small part. I found myself actually wanting a little bit more. Well, there's and here's the thing: you something that we've been talking about off offline for this stuff is like you were saying like this is a Star Wars movie and it's not in a lot of ways. Yep. And he's the char- He's one of those things that it's not very Star Wars. It's very new. This It's whatever this new thing is that they're building. It's well, not he, it's that classic you know what, Star You know Wars. where he would have fit is Rogue One? Yeah. Because it's... Star Wars movies are so concerned with the light and the dark. Right. The good and the bad, the black and the white. And he is such a gray character. Yeah. He, gray, he, gray he, G-R-A-Y. Yeah, he's uh, <laughs> he's holding on. He's making the balance himself. He's, he's yeah. What does he say? Well, he had he's a couple like, lines. They he kill said, you today, you kill them yeah, tomorrow, says, you, something you, like that. You, they blow you up today, you blow them up tomorrow. And he goes, he goes, it's more than that. He goes, all right, we'll see. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's just like no like, slick skin off his back that he's doing his thing. And he had another line about it, too, um, when he's he's trying to teach uh, Finn about it. And he says... Oh, you're impersonating him there for a second. Stutter <laughs> not. Uh, if I ever get that bad, man. <laughs> <laughs> that was that was intense. Yeah. Um, when he says to, to Finn when they're on the ship that they stole, and he says, uh, all right, let's see who owned this ship. And he goes... And he starts showing Ooh. stuff that he, that this this rich arms dealer had sold. Yeah. And it's like, there's a line a couple times in that whole section uh, that Rose says, about basically along the lines of, um, you know, this is the richest game in town is selling to the First Order. And you see, uh, they sold this Walker and yeah, this yeah. Tie Fighter, this and that. And then he says, "Oh, look at this! It looks like you know, he signs. He sells. This guy sells X Wings to uh, to the Resistance as well. It's yeah. There is not there. There. I disagree with that. There's no such thing as good and bad, like he said. Yeah. But there's a lot less people who are true good and true bad than you think. Right. It's it's true. And like the, what I love about it, and like I like that you said that uh, he fits in the Rogue One space more because they. That's the the big thing is like they 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 make the horror of war more real in Rogue One like they it's, it's, a war it's, movie. Le, it's less of a fantasy. It's not Star Wars. Wars. It's a war movie, right? In Star Wars, and they're they're they're. I feel like his character helps bridge that into the main nine. Yeah, <laughs> you know, and it's really cool because they there's a there's other scenes and uh, that are throughout the movie that are just way more intense and emotional to me because I feel like they they handle them way better. Like the opening bombing run of the ship it was cool. It's cool. It's devastating yeah. as it's happening. Like they are the way they they shot that and like had um, like the ships getting torn apart and like people like people dying and you seeing like the effect on other people that are in the squad. Like that was well done. Like it's, not just that, but there's one other thing I found. I, I it was kind of an unformed thought in my mind the first time I saw it, but mm-hmm. it very much solidified for me the second time. That specifically, what happens with the bombers? is the first time we've seen bad luck for the good guys. Yeah. It's always that thing, that, that last bit of luck we need that causes crazy chain reaction that blows up the bad guys and it's why we can overcome these right. odds. It's the first guess. time it's happened the other way around in a Star Wars movie. Yeah. Oh man, I didn't think about that. That's that is really cool. I, I did. I didn't even. I didn't think of it in that way, but I did notice the scene again today. I noticed it last night, but today it's again, such a catastrophic. It sucks, and what really sucks is that like five minutes earlier, she's like, "Keep those formations tight." <laughs> no, maybe we should have loosened <laughs> yeah, the formation a little bit, up just a touch. But like, what? It's the those armed bombs go flying out. And they blow up the other. And then pieces of ship go flying. Oh out. my god, it's brutal! It's so brutal. And then 
uh, uh, and then the way that they do that last shift, the one that actually gets the job done, mm-hmm. but the way that it goes down in the fire, and like that girl, she, what did, she, did they say what her name is? I don't know what her name is, but it was Rose's sister. Yeah, like she, with the way that she kind of just like closes her eyes and accepts it and like goes down with the shift. That was also very Rogue One. It was beautiful. Yeah. It was really well done, but it's, it's like I said, it's devastating. There, so, I don't know what, there's going to be things about these this movie that are nominated for mm. Oscars. There's performances. Yeah. There's the movie awesome. itself. It's it's not just a big dumb blockbuster. Uh, the, the, this is the, the, the yeah. smartest Star Wars movie in some ways. It's the most artsy Star Wars movie yeah. in a lot of ways. <laughs> a lot of ways. Oh my god, the the art style. Of, I have I have, I just have art style as a note here, just because like I'm sure we'll touch on it numerous times. But like, holy crap! Like <laughs> I I've been saying telling people like that ask me like oh how did you like the movie? I tell them two things. One, I loved it. And two, it has one of the most beautiful scenes in cinematic history. It does. That's Do you a, want to talk about that? Because I have like a couple things about that. Like, yeah, that we can talk about. So let's, let's, let's go do ahead. it. So well, I, we we mentioned this on our previous uh, our, our quick reactions episode. But the when they make the what's what's her name, Laura Dern. What's her uh, Vice Admiral Haldo? When she makes the light speed jump through the entire fleet of uh, um, first order ships, that. The way they do it, and I, we were talking a little bit more about this earlier today, the way they do it, and it's like you're kind of like at a midpoint of the speed. You're you're slower than the ship, but you are you have a higher rate than the explosions and destruction that's happening, because there's this, the beautiful, like, light strikes through the ships that you brought up to me, and like, yeah. that, that crack the ships in half, and like, in complete silence, and... Super bright, then super dark, and like black and white, and not it, it's oh my god, and just completely silent and for completely most silent of the until scene. until it, there's an that eruption makes. of sound at the end, yeah, which is just oh no, it was <laughs> it was so cool because it's like really minimalistic and it's it's all dealing in contrast. Black yeah. and white is almost the only color you see on screen for five ten seconds. Like how, yeah. like I don't know how long it actually is, and it's like. It's almost like it's backlit by the explosion as it's happening, even though it's kind of internal to the machine there. Um, but what one of the things that I found interesting about that is comparing it to a scene from Episode 7, two nearly completely opposite things, even though they're both showing gigantic explosive cataclysm on screen. The scene f- when Starkiller Base is fired... Mm-hmm. You look at how opposite all of these things are. You have color contrast, but one of them is all muted black and white, whereas the other one is it's black and red and yeah. gray, and then you start getting more color. One of them is in near silence, whereas the other one, part of what stirs you is the score. Yeah. Absolutely soaring right there. That's like the one part of like music from The Force Awakens that like gets me. It's like, oh shit, like you get tingles from that. Yeah. This is silence until the detonation, whereas the other one, actually the, the explosions of the planet is very muted, but the screams of the people as they watch their impending oh. doom come, they're completely <laughs> opposite things, but I almost experience them in the same way. Yeah. Even though they're diametrically opposite to right. each other. Oh my god. <laughs> it's it's crazy. And uh but the, so the, this scene though that we're talking about with the with the jump through the other ships, the, this entire movie, it's it's almost it it almost reaches the line of too much where balance. Like just just understand the concept of balance. Do you get it? <laughs> balance. Like they're like Luke is basically yelling it at you, right? For half, half the movie. And then, uh, but what this is is like, okay, most of the good guys have died. Let's balance that out. <laughs> like, like really, like in one crazy ass scene. Yeah. And it's like black and white, and then it that explosion is grayish, and it's just it's so good. Yeah. It's so well done. A lot of first order deaths there. A lot of. First order infrastructure destroyed. Right. Multiple cruisers are taken down, including that. Gig- I, I know there's a name for that ship, and I can't remember what it is now. Uh, Snoke's flagship. Yeah, I don't know what it's called. Uh, I'm gonna look that but up. I think it's bonkers. The I love. They do such a great job with a sense of, with sense of scale. <coughs> I feel like in these yes. in these movies, the supremacy. Um, the supremacy. It makes sense. Like he's the supreme leader. You know. You know how big a like. We know how big a Star Destroyer is, right? And we, we get the we get that concept, and especially they do a really good job of it with the crashed one in Seven. Yes. With her, like, climbing through it. That's great. Uh, so we, we get that. Not, and, not just climbing through it. Flying the Millennium Falcon through it. Right. <laughs> right. That's, exactly. So 
and having room to spare. We get that, but then we get so we know how big that is, right? And just to just to blow you away, and these the were most scene, of those weren't full size Star Destroyers either. Those were like smaller versions. Which ones? In in episode eight, if you notice them, they didn't have the big superstructure. Yeah, the top. yeah. The, it's still big, but it's a smaller version. Yeah, it's not like the, like the execution or anything like that. No. Uh, but the, so you get those, and then they bring in that dreadnought, and it's. It's clearly bigger. That and was a like, badass looking it's ship. It's like, oh dang. Like this thing, this thing's fucking huge. That was a badass looking ship <laughs> it was with great. some badass cannons. And then... And then you then see the like, supremacy on yes! top of that. It's like, oh! <laughs> like, oh, this is like three or four times bigger than those other ships. And then you see the supremacy and it's like, you could house each of those in its own bay inside of the ship. Right. And there's like, what, ten of them? Like, I don't know. <laughs> it's a, a flying planet. What is this? Yeah, what is this craziness? That thing is almost approaching... Like a hemisphere of the Death Star. Yeah. But it's a ship. Right. And moving at light speed. Yeah. Oh my god. Craziness. Uh, back, back to the art style. The the other thing that that just blows me away. So there's red. there's two things. <laughs> well, red. Exactly. And we talked about this a little bit um, in the last uh, quick episode. But the that salt planet, man. And Great. all the marketing t- material that goes with that. Like, like all of the posters that are around that like very white and red. Like it's just... It looks so. It looks so good, yeah. you know. And like, it's just it was it's crazy because it's like a, it's like a psychological thing. Because there's the red on white is stark, right? Yeah. But then also, it's that's a very particular trigger in our own minds, right? Where like when you see like red on white like that, you're you think blood. Yeah. You think blood and death. Huh. And I did. Right? <laughs> Why well, is that guy's foot bleeding? Is yes. what it's okay. Here's uh, I'm gonna stop for a second right here. I talked about this yesterday. The guy steps onto the salt, right, and leaves the red footprint. I'm like, oh, why is his foot bleeding? And then the next guy goes, salt, right? We talked about that. Watching it again, the area of the ground that he touches before he puts it in his mouth is the reddish area where he stepped. And I'm like, that's weird. <laughs> like, because in my, what, the first time I saw it, I was like, is he tasting his blood? I'm like, what's, what's going on? Salt? Okay, maybe it's salty. Salt that's weird. Me. I don't know. That's, very strange <laughs> <laughs> but that, that that was my only issue is where he tastes it <laughs> i mean that's fair i will say it made a lot more sense knowing it up front it made a lot more sense to me because right before that guy climbs out of the trench and walks you can see that the ground in the trench is red yes and i didn't realize that the well you had seen some you could see it underneath it and you can see on the uh, walls in the back the walls in the background yeah. and then you see more and more of it as uh, as Chewie flies the the Millennium Falcon through the that planet. was cool. You that one of the great the art whole part style of it there. is red, like you know. What I mean, it's cool because it was similar to it was similar to how they fly through the Death Star in Return of the Jedi. Yeah, um, but still very much different because you have actual area effects instead of like certain death when you touch it. You actually see stuff blasting off the sides yeah. and it's leaving up this kicking up this red dust and shit like that. Mm, and like Chewie kind of knowing what he can and can't get away with with scraping the sides. Like, but like, still cutting it too close. Yeah. And, and like, <laughs> Ray's like, what the Ray's like, yeah, this is <laughs> It's great. Oh man, that that is fun. I love that we get that, um, we get Chewie piloting the ship and like, you know, just kicking ass. Yeah. <laughs> it's so good. Swatting porgs. Also the, uh, the, just the identical scene from Seven of uh, Finn just being real excited when somebody comes in and starts wrecking people. Yeah! yeah! <laughs> like, this guy, he's such a rallier. <laughs> also, like, he had another great line, like, surrounding all of that. Like, last one, it was, that's one hell of a pilot, and this yeah. time it's, oh, they hate that yeah. ship. <laughs> <laughs> I do love that that ship embodies for, um, for Ben Solo. Um, I find, as these movies go more and more, Farther and farther, I want to call him Ben Solo a lot more and Kylo Ren a lot less. Yeah, I don't know why because it's actually making the reverse transition. Yeah, maybe it's, in my mind it's like I feel like it would piss him off. Right, you know, <laughs> you what just mean? got a little dig at him. Yeah, oh, okay. that's, that's I, what it is. I, I can accept that. Fuck you. Yeah. <laughs> um, oh, little Ben gonna cry. <laughs> yeah, uh, you gonna cry? You gonna cry? Yeah. I, 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 I think seeing that visceral reaction, shoot that piece of junk down. Like we've heard it called a piece of junk so many yeah. times, and just like how upset he is at just seeing it and it just reminds him of like the things that no matter how much he says kill the past leave it behind he still can't right no matter how hard he tries it's always another thing mm-hmm. Ugh. so good so good oh man 
Chewy. Back to Chewy for a second. <laughs> when Chewy kicks the door in on Luke's oh, little home planet, that's because I, honestly, I it didn't register the first time I saw what was happening. I thought Ray Force pushed it. So did I. I was like, damn. So did I. And then giant bear comes walking in, and it's like, oh. What is Chewy? Is he a bear or is he a dog? He's a Wookie. Yeah, but like an analog to that. I don't know. I, hmm. Is he a bear dog? Is he a man bear pig? He's a. I feel like it's bear dog <laughs> because he kind of he likes getting scratched behind the ear. I mean, he's walking around on two feet, so right. he's like more like a more like a dog. And he's but he's but his face looks more like a. I mean, it's more like a bear. But his face looks more like <laughs> what a dog. Kind of dogs, you hanging around? <laughs> you don't know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. His face is definitely dog like. Well, okay. Also, the sound uh, that he makes kind of sounds space like my dog sometimes. Would have me believe he's a mom. <laughs> that he's a. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, Mom! I'm my own best friend. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. I love that movie. I haven't seen that in a while. But, uh, the, uh, that, that final, that whole final encounter on that. Oh, here's a fun thing. On that same, what is it, Kerr? Kerr? Crate? Crate? Crate. The Kerr's on the. Crate. Uh, on that planet, uh, the scene that we get after, uh, Ben Solo's interaction with, uh, with, with not Luke, uh, <laughs> they, they walk in and it's the the shot down from the top. That's a still. That's a great still frame. If Wait, you want one? to take that, it's the shot down as they're walking into the base, and it's all black and red from oh, the, yeah. the destruction that got was caused by like that battering ram. What's crazy? What I love about that is that's that's cool because that scene is in trailer. the trailer, and in the trailer I'm like, oh, is this like that Darth Vader lair? Because it looks like lava. Yeah, I guess so, because it's that scorched, like, rock and yeah. stuff like that. Yeah, which was really cool to, to see, like, that it wasn't, and it was its own thing. It yeah. was like, like, oh, okay, here, here's a little teaser. Nope, <laughs> it's not that. Like, this is our thing. Like, yeah. this is a new place. <laughs> I like that. That was cool. But, uh, the, that battering ram, some, some intense stuff. You know what's creepy about that thing? What? The little, the little walking hands. The little walking hands that crawl it across the floor. Yeah. Here's my question. How long were they at that base? Not long. Okay. How, Hours. How do the adats and how do they get there? So they were showing them. <laughs> you could see across a couple of scenes during the movie that they're hooked up to a transport shuttle thing. Okay. Um, they so are. as the supremacy is getting destroyed, they don't show it happening, you but just he's that. yelling at Hux. Get the forces ready for invasion. They're going to be down there. Right. So they deployed them out of the bay. Because remember, he takes off like one wing of the supremacy, but right. most of the ship was still basically functioning. It's going to go down. Yeah. But it's not imploding as we speak. Yeah. But what's weird to me though, like I I remember seeing it while I was on, while it was on the ship, but I didn't really see it as being attached to another thing. If you see the the small walkers, which you didn't see in this on that battle, yeah, were all like tied to like bays. But if you look, you could see at one or two scenes the the big walkers, which is I know it's 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 like an ad ad or ATAT, but this is clearly a modified version because it looks like a gorilla walking. It's just the new version, yeah. I don't know what they call it, the uh, new yeah. version because they would give some sort of like it's modified a, well, it's a different model number or something. Yeah, yeah. Um, you can see that all of those are paired. All of those ones are paired in the bays. They're like between, there's like some sort of structure, uh-huh. and then there's one on each side, and they, I think they they even are, might be suspended in some of those shots. Yeah, they, attached, it definitely is suspended. They're attached to like basically it's like a, a it's just a transport ship. That's okay, I didn't really, if, if from my perspective, I didn't see that it was a ship. I just thought it was like it in the bay in this thing. Yeah. So I just didn't know what the because that's that's one of those things. It's like I think they basically get dropped in a huge barrel in um, Empire Strikes Back. Do they? Like, I think they basically are in a huge crate, and they drop the crate, and the thing slams open, and it walks out. Oh, I don't even remember that. Okay. I, I know I've seen it. It might have Maybe been something that game. was cut out of it, or oh. they did it in the game, and like, there's basically one of those things like, like yeah. oh, how did that actually happen? It's like, oh, yeah, this is how it happened. Yeah. Like, that was the bit of it. Yeah, that makes sense. Because like I, it's just one of those things that's like, well, it's going to take them, what, like, Six days to arrive at this point. <laughs> at this speed, and just the, the girl, slow gorilla walk, <laughs> and then like little lady fingers just c- c- curling across the floor with the that one seemed ramp. more problematic. That one was strange because how how close does it need to be? It wasn't it wasn't clear. Like it was it moved a, a, a few feet and then it's like okay now we're ready. Well, it's hard to tell how <laughs> far it is. I mean, you can clearly see the it's a big door. 
Yeah. You can clearly see it. It's like, was it a mile away? Like, I don't know. I don't know. It's not crazy far, but it's also not, like, right outside either. Right, but, like, it, 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 the way that it went forward, it almost looked like it only went a little bit forward from where it dropped to, to shoot it. It's hard to it tell with all that stuff. Necessary. Basically with those things, like, they just drop it outside of whatever the shield goes to. Right. And then, like, they just walk it through the shield from there. Yeah. Um, But also for that one, since it was shooting a giant fucking laser at it, you don't have to be that close. Like, Which is like a mini Death Star cannon? Is that what, that, that was basically uh, what they Finn, were saying? Uh, Finn said uh, it's, it was a modified Star Destroyer technology. Mm. Like, they basically took one of the gigantic... Star Destroyer or Death Star? I thought he said Star Destroyer. Oh, I thought he said Death Star. I don't know. He might have. I, I forget. Anyway. One of those. Because it, it kind of makes sense for it to be Death Star because it, it works almost the same way, like... Where it shoots the Charging first focus whatever, beam, yeah. like that. The like, I don't know what like what they. I'm sure there's some somebody that can tell me exactly how it's meant to have worked. But it almost looks like it creates like a vacuum first and then shoots this thing through it. It's weird. I don't know, but that's that seems what they like what they were doing. Yeah, it, that was kind of weird. It was like a two stage like mm-hmm. firing mechanism. <laughs> Maybe it's just a crazy sight because this thing is so powerful. It's like we want to make sure we hit the right thing. Good God, move it to the left. You know, there's, <laughs> we're gonna have to talk about. A lot of deaths, both significant and insignificant. Um, I was really concerned that Finn was going to die. Yeah, so was I. Because, first of all, it didn't really seem to be executing the plan the way they were supposed to be executing the plan. He's like, oh, while they're charging, it's it's vulnerable. It starts shooting at it. But they're not shooting at it. Right. They just keep flying closer and closer to it. Like, you have blasters. Shoot. Yeah. Like, as you're flying, shoot. Maybe they don't work, but maybe they do. Like, what, right. do you really need to get right up its fucking nose to shoot it? Like... Good question. Um, like obviously, there's some angling thing because those hand things covered it, but you could see the way he was flying. He's you can clearly have a line of sight there. Yeah. So I don't know why he had this like turned into this trench. There was a certain point where he's in the beam and his you can see his blasters get melted. Right. But they could have been shooting before that. Is like right. The point no, I was I, making. Yeah, I agree. It would have been more sense if they were shooting and it's like, oh, it didn't work. I'm just gonna ram my ship right up. That would have made more sense. Yeah. Um, but I was like, wow, of all these people. We're killing off important characters, both old and new. Are they really going to kill off Finn here? Like, that seems premature. Mm-hmm. It, it, def- it definitely would have been. Yeah. I'm glad they didn't. But if they wanted to do it, and they wanted to do it right, they could have tapped into the Independence Day fan and all of us, and he could have said, Hello, oh, boys! <laughs> I'm back! <laughs> he would. Which actually would have been perfect, considering Fathom said it's so lovely to have you back. Yeah. <laughs> Oh my god, that'd be amazing, <laughs> right? But uh, the, yeah, I, I'm glad they didn't kill him. But I, I, I will say definitely. Yesterday when we saw it the first time, I was like, oh no, yeah, no, so soon. I mean, they got so, <laughs> so close. soon. They got so, he got they got like it wasn't one of those things where he's like he made the decision and then like something peeled off. Like he got as close to you as as you can. Yeah. And the laser was clearly melting his. He closed his eyes. Yeah. <laughs> he closed his eyes and he accepted it. Jesus, take the wheel. Just let it happen. <laughs> <laughs> And then Rose comes swooping in from the side. I'm like, I, I will say as much. Also, as I didn't when we want... first watched it, I was quite sure she was dead. Oh yeah, me too. Like the way it, like it happened, the dramatic thing, like her slumping down. I was like, oh, that sucks. What I actually thought was going to happen there, I thought, because she she thinks that he's like this this great hero. Like she she looks up to him so much. I thought she under like was going to understand like why he's doing this and that it has to be done to stop this thing. I thought she was going to bump him and go into it herself. I thought she, that's yeah. how it was going to go. I'm glad they both live because I'd like to see how this plays out. Plus it sets up a juicy love triangle. That, right. Love quadrangle. Right. Because now we have a little Poe yeah. and Ray thing going po on. Poe and Ray are going to do it, as Kim would say. <laughs> we, we watched uh, the, Kim, we watched Kim, the trailer. Kim didn't get her one thing that she wanted. Uh, was uh, Kylo Ren and Ray? Oh, is yeah. that going to be a thing? They're going to do it, aren't they? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> that was great. The touched hands. <laughs> I was like, I, I don't know. People seem like she goes. I'm sorry, that's just me. I was like, no, no. A lot of people think that online. Like, you're like not at all. Like, like it may be the minority, but it's not a vast minority. Yeah. And then the movie, the movie ends. Like one of the first things she goes, they're not gonna do it. <laughs> <laughs> so good. And that was kind of funny because you had that whole thing where it's like it starts off as like hero worship, like you said, like Rose to Finn, and then she realizes that he's just a guy. Yeah. But then also she realizes that just because he's not a hero doesn't mean that she, he's not a good guy worth right. saving and worth fighting for and she's clearly in love with him and she kissed him and surprised him like I, you could see that he liked being around her but I never got the impression yeah. that he felt the same way because there's always a thing you know he, oh, where's Ray you yeah. know he's asking early on but let's, well, let's bring it right back to balance though 
they have the same almost the same roles on different sides of the of the war what do you mean like she works in the ship he works on the ship he was basically a janitor Yes. Right. And she, Up until he, but she was, she was, she was an engineer. Yeah. Right. She was an engineer, but she, like, still, like they're like they're workers in the crew of either side of the war, and like they they just had this they had they had chemistry they had this yeah. they they had when they were talking about like how they were gonna take the thing down and completing each other's sentences like it was adorable yeah. like stop stop. <laughs> <laughs> And How then, did you guys uh, meet? Yeah. Uh, I was just lucky, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> and then, and then uh, Ray and uh, and Poe shook hands. <laughs> and then they were just like, Is <laughs> 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 so, that the force? Is that the force in here? Is it yeah. just me? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah I'm Ray. <laughs> I know. I know. <laughs> oh my god. Jumping ahead for a second, well, or back, wherever, doesn't matter. Uh, because of these two characters, uh, when they, when they come out of it, the, they fly into the door right before it closes mm-hmm. on the crate. The, the crate. <laughs> Thank you for reminding me. It's like uh, such an easy one syllable. It's, it's, like, it's not a funky that's, word. That's it's why. Like, for whatever reason, it's difficult? just like it's like one bit of memory, and it just keeps <laughs> flying away. But, like garbage. Is what was the one? There was the one that you. It was someone's name. It was in Hacksaw Ridge. Yeah. Doss. Yeah. Papa Doss. Papa Doss. <laughs> uh, but they, so when they when they fly in and they're like, wait, wait, don't shoot, don't shoot, and and Finn and Rose pop up and Poe goes, you're not dead, like <laughs> not they're alive. The oh, opposite. Hey, you guys are. You're good. not dead, which is great. Where's my droid? Then he belly rubs BB-8. Yeah, <laughs> that was the greatest exactly scene in the movie. Like, like, that's like you like greet your dog when you have like when you're on vacation. Who's a good boy? And yeah, he's <laughs> rubbing the he's rubbing the droid. <laughs> I just remember yesterday when we saw it, I was, I was like, did I just see that? And I really paid attention to this. I was like, yeah, yeah, he's totally patting his belly. Well, we're on, so like, <laughs> just comedy in general. Yeah. Oh. Um, there was a lot they of, like, like, we've been tr- trending that way. Like, Force Awakens set the stage. Rogue One, I think, expanded on a little bit. And also introduced the whole, like, having comedy lighten the mood and quite dark material. Yeah. And this took that model and, like put it on steroids because like this movie is dark as shit it's even probably darker than Rogue One which I didn't think they were going to be able to accomplish yeah. in a Star Wars movie and there's even more humor to help balance right. it out well, which is great and I feel like that's probably the even reason. interesting it's, it's funny I've been like looking at some reaction of people because like, the stuff I was seeing was all from people who were privileged to go to early the, the screening yeah. or screenings and now everyone who started seeing it last night like we did are talking about it as well, and that's this movie would be way too heavy without the humor to balance yeah, it out. Yeah, for sure. But what's surprising real me, depressing. not so much about just having that to balance it out, is even intra scene things that are quite funny, even though it's very dark in that scene itself. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. All like there's there's so there is so much of it. Like Poe yelling at C three PO while the world is falling down. Oh around him. my god, that uh, was great. Here's a funny scene. Uh, I don't know if you caught it. It's, um, <laughs> so, uh, Leia is talking to the other one. Holdo. Holdo. Leia is talking to Holdo, and she's, uh, Holdo saying someone's gotta stay behind to, you know, to pilot the ship. I don't know if you noticed the way that, that scene is shot. 3PO slow turns and walks away. Wait, did he? I didn't see that. <laughs> he, he's like, he like stops. Turns and he walks up onto the ship. It's like, like the, and he's like, slowly he's, like backing away. Yeah, like if, you, if you're paying attention to the scene, like it, I, it feels very deliberate that he is like this quarter of the screen, like yes. just walking out of the scene. <laughs> or like even like to finish that scene off, um, it felt really real and, and human. Where the two of them like both say, "May the fourth be with you" at the same time. Yeah, and they both get cut off. That was like, funny. No, you say it. Yeah, yeah and then even like Caesar, I've been saying it so many times. Yeah. why don't you finish it off? Like, I, I don't know why I, that was kind of cool. I liked that. That's I feel like that's how like two people who have been great friends and they understand what's going on here. Yeah, um, like that's it wasn't clean and precise and perfect. It was messy. Yeah, because that's how it was real. That conversation yeah. would go down. A hundred percent. I love it. This is, which is great because like uh, that character sucks <laughs> until Holdo. Yeah, until that scene where you're like, oh. All right, <laughs> fine. Well, I do think it was a failing on her part. We discussed that um, the rigidity, as much as you need sometimes more order and discipline than you get in that sort of this rebellion, that's ragtag group. You know, some of what makes them so successful is how loose they can be, but also 
when it comes to life or death and following orders, you need to follow orders. But uh, yeah, I think that that was kind of a flaw of that character. Yeah, is how rigid she was, which is really a weird like oxymoron because like she's got purple hair. Yeah, and you're like, oh, she's like, she's like cool, fun loving, weed smoking aunt, right? But no, she's well, not. That, 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 <laughs> and that was my point. They're a makeshift army. They're not like the military. So it's, I would expect a little bit of more transparency with like this is what we're doing this is why we should do it this way like just not that it's a democracy like this is how we're gonna do if you don't agree with it at that point cool take them to the break whatever yeah. <laughs> you know but like they're 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 more human than the other the other side yeah and like it that would have made it make more sense to me like i don't know it's just it it, it fell flat at first i'm i i'm glad they they kind of redeem her character and then again like i said she's responsible for the most beautiful scene in the movie yeah. but uh it was, it was that was that piece of it missed the mark for me. Yeah, and I well, and the thing is, I do think it was done intentionally. I don't think it was a mistake per yeah. se, um, but yeah, it just felt a little too. It, it the rigidity made it almost feel contrived at a certain point. Like it was a permanent. It was a barrier thrown up in front of Poe for his own growth as yeah. a leader, which was necessary. But I guess it's just a little bit imperfect the way they executed yeah. it. When a uh... That's an interesting scene when like there's like obviously we're gonna put this person in command and then they say her name and you can see like like he's like I made it for a second and then it's not him yeah and he's like oh. yeah that's how I read it too the like the first time I was watching it is like oh he thinks he's the one who's next in line yeah it's weird there's not a particularly large group of rebels it's yeah. weird that they don't know that he didn't know her like he just knew her reputation right it, you know what I mean it was yeah was she not there like, that she that's what up. i was confused yeah. by because like it's not like they regrouped somewhere else with other right that was, factions that, was that would have made more sense um even though we didn't see her in the first movie she has to have been involved in some way because she's with them at the base and leaving yeah she would have he would have had to run into her at some point you know what i mean like they may not be best friends yeah but like you'd have to at least be like oh yeah that's, Ad- that's admiral holdo over there well here's another character relationship that i'm a little confused about um maz and poe yeah, it was weird that they Did were they friends. have an interaction in Seven? No. No. But I guess I could see no, that being No, because Poe never case. steps on the ground when they're on that planet. He's on the x Well, they don't They don't show off. us that at all, but it, it, it's very possible that they did something. Like, I mean, in between, like, something could have happened. But it's just... It's just a, well, no, because strange. because Han and, and, and Finn talk to Leia, but Finn doesn't actually talk to, to oh, Poe right, again until, until they get back, they get back no, to Elenium. Yeah, so I don't know what that... that it's, it's strange, because it's almost like, like they're old buddies. Like, like he knows her. I mean, she certainly had a reputation yeah. uh, around uh, the galaxy, so sure. it's possible that in some previous time we had, they had met up and spoke. And that's one of the things that's actually um, part of the canon. That it's a it was like a comic series following Poe, and it leads into him meeting up uh, on Jakku and finding the map piece from Lor Santeca. Mm-hmm. Um, there was a whole he was being dogged by the First Order, going station by station trying to find track the path of Luke Skywalker before he went missing. Right. So he could have met her along that journey. I don't know. I never read the comics. I would just kind of... Yeah, that, that would make sense. And it's very possible there's extended universe stuff there and we're just supposed to accept it. Yeah. Which is... I'm okay, I'm kind of okay with that. Yeah. I was just kind of curious because there is no... <clears throat> it, they do seem like they know each other on some personal level. Yes. By the... By the it's not just a reputation thing like, oh, yeah. I know of Maz Kanata. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like it's... Yeah. Very, very strange. Um, now in that scene... This is where... Maz fucking shut up. This is where wild speculation comes into play. She's back. She'll be back. She'll be back. Um, no, that's not the wild speculation. The wild speculation is that the person that she sends Finn and Rose to meet is Lando Calrissian. This I, is entirely speculation this is speculation, and I'm standing by it. And here's what... Like, the, everything that she says makes me believe that it's him. Especially the high-stakes gambling. And... You know the when she says that whatever the flower the type of flower it was yeah it was like the red something rose or something right like whatever like I was like that's totally something that this dude would wear and then <coughs> when we see it I'm like that's totally something this dude would wear and then you see it on this guy I'm like oh that's not him but very plausible that he lost it to him in some in some oh my god the light I'm right <laughs> the, the light just turned on. <laughs> Uh, very, very possible 
That is him. Let me tell you how you're, you're, you're wrong. Okay, hit me. In IMDb, there is someone credited as the master code breaker. <laughs> I'm sure they would credit him that way. And uh, that was actually Justin Thoreau. I thought he looked familiar and I couldn't figure out who he was. I want, I still, I'm standing, I'm holding on to this because I love Lando. <laughs> it, was, it was the mustache. I didn't recognize him with the mustache. And uh, I really want to see some Billy D. Williams at some point. I mean, don't get me wrong, I'd do as well. Mm-hmm. I just don't know if that that's the. Like, it's got to be. It has to be. I Why, mean, this guy was talked up in such a way that, with such a reputation, for it to be this this one-off guy that we've never seen before, have no connection to, it doesn't seem right. Now, the one thing I will say that's in your favor is the fact that she never gave him a name. Mm-hmm. It's weird that she didn't give him a name. Yeah. I, I thought that pretty substantially. Like, why wouldn't you say his name? Like, you know, you could say... Oh, he goes under many aliases, but his name is, you know, yeah. something like that would have made sense, you know, especially especially for a code breaker, you know right. what I mean? And they're going to need him again in the next episode. <laughs> well, certainly, I mean, like, I mean, it could just be a weird cameo. There's a lot of random cameos in these movies now, yeah. um, including, like, two British princes. Did you like or not like that joke I made this morning? <laughs> I liked it. I liked it. <laughs> princes who adore you. Um... <laughs> What, who were the other cameos? Um, well, and also in that same <coughs> scene, in that same scene was um, again it's a weird way to call it a cameo because there were stormtroopers so mm-hmm. you didn't see their faces but the two the two princes and Tom Hardy I think were the top, the stormtroopers in that oh, okay and then also right. um, Joseph Gordon Levitt who was worked with Ryan Johnson on Looper and I think someone else too um, was he's got a name. I think he's playing an alien, so I think he just did a voice. Oh, okay. Slow and low. I don't know who that huh. is, though. Interesting. Let's see if they... Can we get an image on that? Well, while you're looking that up, there's... Can I get the internet to work on that? There's a little bit of, a, of another balance thing that I want to point out. I like We, we saw it in the in like trailers and poster work and stuff like that, but uh, the BB-8 dark side balance, that black droid, that is, oh, yeah. that's the same type of ball droid. Um, that was kind of cool. I liked that. He had like this little adversary for a little bit, just like a small amount of time. But, uh, what I love about both scenes is when they empty the garbage can and put it over him. And yeah, I was like, around. why did they didn't want to think that's going to work? Not only, it, like, that's, that's silly, right? And that was a really funny, like, clever thing. Like, okay, yeah, that totally looks like an Imperial droid right now. What's better is that BB-8 is mimicking the... Yep, yep, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm just like, oh my like god, the, this the is the greatest. Sounds, right? yeah. like the sounds. <laughs> I was so happy. <laughs> and it's and he's like going, slamming it. But he people. looks like he's a master that's wasted. Yeah. <laughs> <It's>, <laughs> he's just swerving. Which they do some swerving, but they never seem to crash. All right. <laughs> he almost knocked that stormtrooper like off. He the... almost knocked him off the edge. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's so funny. Oh I forgot Gareth Edwards is also a trench soldier on that final oh, scene cool. on. Great. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Woo! Nailed it. I was going to say, what was, what were the Kree? The what? The Kree. Was that Avengers? Yes. Wasn't that the... Um... The aliens? Yes. Yeah. For some reason, that's what keeps popping into my head. No, Crete. Yeah, no, I get it. This second. Crete. Let's see if I get it the next second. Let's talk a little bit about creatures in this movie. Crete. Creatures. There's some creatures <laughs> throughout this movie. There were creatures on Crete. The... Crystal critters. Crystal critters. <laughs> Great. Oh, there's one right there. Tremendous line. <laughs> I like that they're not. Uh, I know, like people get up in arms about the you know the random creatures that get put in these movies, and like people like to hate on it. Except it's so very Star Wars. So stop. Like just yeah. just get over it. Like, well, the I thing is, it's is now it cool so very like Star them? Wars because of it happening in Endor normalized it. Ewoks normalized it. Yeah. People are always going to hate that. And it's always, oh, is this the next Ewok? You know? I know. Everyone was talking about with the porks. I, don't, I just don't... I don't feel that way. And I honestly, mean, I, it's like this weird they, thing to hold on to. Like, they, just let it go, people. That was weird. <laughs> <laughs> there was a hand motion. There was a hand motion. Do with that what you will, audience. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, well, so, I mean, that's what they default to now. Is that, you know, there's going to be probably some sort of critter or creature that's comic relief. And there's nothing wrong with that. No, there, is, there really isn't. The thing is, you got to pace yourself. It's all about how and when and why they're used. Yeah. And I didn't think they overused the porgs. I thought they used the perfect is that amount of porgs. little birds thing? Yes. Those things were great. Here's the thing with they those guys. They used a perfect amount. 
You know what? Also, they, the they also had me. Time as Ewoks, it might have been annoying. They 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 put me on this emotional roller coaster for a second there too. When one of them is looking into the lightsaber, and the other one is stomping on the switch, and I'm like, please don't kill your buddy. So the, <laughs> you and me were sitting and watching it the second time. So I already seen the scene, but I was sitting next to Damien, and it's very quiet during that scene. And the, the first time we're watching it, and I went, oh no. <laughs> <laughs> Like, but very audibly, and Damien started cracking up. <laughs> I was terrified. So I was like, is that where we're going to get our comedic relief, comedic relief for? Is he just going to, like, torch his friend with the lightsaber on accident? Like, holy shit. Oh my god. That was... That was... I, I was scared. Yeah. I was scared for that little thing. I, I audibly Because they, they are adorable. Oh no. <laughs> I also... I caught better this time around. When Chewie's in the ship, and they're like... One of them has made a nest, which is great. I didn't see I that the liked, first time. I, I didn't the, see the nesting one. I saw the nest one the first time. What I didn't see the first time is the visor one. <laughs> the one I didn't see that one. There's what there's this, the, the, in that sequence where they show the one with the yeah, nest. Yeah. And there's Chewy surrounded by. There's one of them chewing on the seat. That's the one I saw this time. <laughs> that, I saw that one the first time. What I didn't see is the one that's sitting on the console, like has pulled the wiring up or something, and there's like this thing, and it's across his face, <laughs> and it's flashing lights, and it looks like he's got a VR headset on. It's fucking hysterical. <laughs> that's so great. And that's the one that I think he like swats out of the way. Oh, like, uh, okay. Yeah, the <laughs> the one that got me today was the was the one that's like chewing on the seat, ripping it up, and Chew is like, "Come on!" Yeah, he's just looking around. He's exasperated. Also, and like, I mean, the scene is really funny where Chewie's cooking them, and he's eating them, right? And then there's a whole he's handful looking. of them that are looking terrified, and he roars, and they run away. And then there's the one that's crying, and it's like it's kind of adorable and cute, and you're like, "Oh no." Those were related. Yep. <laughs> that's this one's mama. 100%. Oh my god. And well now and now I feel like I want to believe that that's the one that is in the final scenes on the Millennium Falcon. Oh. Chewie killed his parents. So adopted him. He adopted him. <laughs> and he's like stuck up on the window with his little belt. They were those things were adorable. Yeah. <laughs> that, that animal was so funny. But then we get the uh the little toad people. Uh the one with the the green milk. Oh no, that was I don't know what that was. I thought that's what you're talking no, about. No, I'm talking about the like the natives of the island. The that, nuns? Yeah. <laughs> they actually had like a name, it's like some sort of nun. Like, oh, okay. Because they're like they're like the character well, they call them the caretakers or whatever. They're yeah. like the caretakers of like the Church of the Force or whatever. Mm-hmm. But I like so I love, obviously the scene is really funny where like after she shoots I was cleaning my blaster and it went off, like stop. <laughs> <laughs> right? But after that scene where like they're like they're looking at it and trying to fix the hole and it's just like, come on, right? But then when she cuts the the rock and it goes down and the the one that's wheeling the wheelbarrow and the way that's that's done like it breaks and she's got both pieces in her hands and she drops them and she's just like and looks the fuck? and looks, <laughs> looks up and they see Ray and it's just, like get this bitch off this island <laughs> and she just there just like retracts the blade yeah. of the lightsaber and just like backs away from the cliff slowly. Yeah. Funny though, no reaction from those folks when Luke just blows up one of the shacks. Yeah. They well, didn't, we didn't seem to care about that. that. We didn't yeah. see after that. <laughs> I think they'd be around. It was the middle of the night and it was raining. Ah, still. He, get, he gets away with murder. Um, I have those other weird things listed here as the milkmaids. I don't know what they were called. That scene is weird. For several reasons. I feel like they were just... It was almost sexual in nature. <sighs> they were just <laughs> gross, period. The milk is green. What is it with him and colored milk? He just liked colored milk. He drank it weird as shit too. It's like falling all over yeah. his beard, and he like made like this weird like like it, face the only way it could have been worse is afterwards he went like his lips. <sighs> and it just lasts. That would have been weird too. I was thinking more like if he like yeah. licked his lips like the green milk like yeah, yeah. Because, <laughs> because it's rolling down his disgusting beard. Oh yeah. god! Oh my god! That's what he used to dye the beard later on the movie. <laughs> um, those things were were disgusting, and I I got I feel like. Uh, as they were making the movies, like somebody was just like, "Let's do something weird." Let's. You guys want to get weird for like one scene? <laughs> All right. Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, let's get let's get weird. And it, it let's is. Have Luke, of, let's have Luke Skywalker grab a nipple. It, yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. Not not awkwardly just push it. He just. <laughs> it was weird. To be fair, it was like a hand sized nipple. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, so what's, what's funny though is like in the end, I guess if you want to look back on the scene like later on. It makes a little bit of sense because he found this little place that he could live that feels a little bit like home. So I'm imagining in my mind, I'm guessing this milk tastes the same as the the was it Jawa juice, the the blue milk that he drank. Jawa juice. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> the blue milk that he drinks. I do not think that's what it's called. <laughs> um, but it, First I, of all, wait, no, stop. <laughs> just consider the implications of what you just said. I thought that's what that giant machine was for. It just... <laughs> it's horrifying. It, it crawls the sand, it picks them up and crushes them. Makes they them... drive the machine! <laughs> or does the machine drive them? <laughs> We did see a, a weird trailer for something called Mortal Engines, and it looked like that big ship was eating that small ship full of people. So That was weird. What the hell was that movie about? I don't know. I, did you ever hear anything about this thing? No, it was the first it, one. It's like Peter Jack. I was like, what's going on? I think it's based on something. It, I mean, I would imagine so. Yeah. Strange. I guess we'll get into that at some point. Weird sidebar. Yeah. Sorry, guys. That was weird. It was weird. Anyway, uh, back to the milk. So the the blue milk, you know, he. It's, I feel like he found this place that he could live. That's like you know has no tech, so that he can't be tracked. One, that's also why I imagine his his uh, X wing is in the water, and two. I think it was also to re- like remove temptation. Potentially, well, but I mean, it's I guess really no temptation the there because he like, could just yeah, he's done it before. Um, but two, like the like it feels like a little bit like home for him, right? And then you get that. I feel like if you look back on it, really, there's no sand and there's all the water. Uh, could uh, not be less uh, like his home. Listen, listen, it's the best parts of home. The rest of his home sucked, but he got his guy. He's got two his sons milk. and no women. He's got his <laughs> he's got his milk, <laughs> and he's got his two sons. Um, the I really really love the final scene of him on the rock, where you see the one son, and then they pull back and take it from a different angle, and there's the two, and it's just it's just like it's a new hope. I don't remember seeing two sons earlier in the movie. I'm gonna have to watch it a third and fourth time to notice it. Yeah, I only noticed it in that. Scene. I don't think that there was actually two sons. I think that was like no. him. Dying and just you know like those whole like life flash. No, there were two thing. sons. What's the name of this planet? Octo. Two sons of Octo. I'm sure you're not the first person looking up. Star Wars fans stunned after two sons are spotted in UK sky during what? <laughs> what? <laughs> this is this is off the air research. Yep. Yep. No, you you go ahead. I'm gonna <laughs> I'm gonna find out. <laughs> so I want to talk about BB-8 being a badass. BB-8 was a badass. BB-8 killed some folks. A lot of folks. Yeah. He was like, went full saboteur mode. He was fucking shit up. He yeah. Was a menace. He was stealing shit. Yeah. Finn's a bad influence. Yeah. <laughs> he really, <laughs> really is. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> but. Uh, yeah, but so I love the the first the first like uh, maybe not the first thing that he does the first thing I can remember him doing he like somehow manages to knock out and tie all those guys up yes. and DJ's like did you do this you just see him retracting something into yeah. his body <laughs> yeah not clear what it what is. have you done BB <laughs> and then he shoots all those coins at that one guy and like a like, machine gun <laughs> but then he of course then he blows on it like it's the end of a gun phenomenal ah. Uh, that's the that's the thumbs up scene. Still not as good as the thumbs up, but no, it's good. Like, that's like that. That was like the thumbs up was so it. perfect. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, you know what's what's great about that? And not to you know, I know it's episode seven, but it's so quick, it's so immediate. Like it's just like, yep, hop right to it. Yeah, I love that. Um, yeah. So he the AT he, the ATST. He, he, yeah, he hijacks an ATST and it's just shooting up a cargo bay full of stormtroopers. Yep. He, he takes out a lot of motherfuckers with that thing. Yeah, he does. He steals that ship. With um, DJ? Yep. Him and DJ. Uh, he said that I stole a ship. That's not entirely true. I believe you helped. <laughs> <laughs> we stole a ship. <laughs> we stole a ship. <laughs> that was great. Yeah, it's it was that was fun to see. I like I also like that opening scene where he's trying to patch the holes and it's like it's a cartoon. It's, it's the thing like where the, the, the ship is sinking and there's yeah. all the water <laughs> and he's a new just hole trying to stop it. <laughs> but then he just, he just slams the... his head into it. Oh my god, this is terrible. Oh, I gotta, we gotta talk about uh, uh, Snoke. Okay. Um, the character was interesting to me, obviously, from Seven, because of the mystery around him. And I want... Also, Andy Serkis? Oh, yeah. You know. Um, I, I want to know more about the character, and I, I'm i not mad that they killed him in this movie. Just a little disappointed. I was, I'm disappointed that I didn't get more yes. like, about him. I'm hoping that it's It was gratifying point, the way it all went down. Yeah, it, it was really just, was. I kind of wanted more time with him. Right, like that would have been an okay. That would I, I kind of expected that to be more of like a finale of the trilogy kind of. Yeah, thing. Um, but I, I, I kind of like. Although there was, it. It, I, there was a certain part of my mind I was like, because a lot of people were wondering whether this movie would see either Luke or Ray go to the dark side, because that would really be playing against type. Yeah. Um, 
I had wondered whether Ray and or Ben would kill him in this one, and mm. one of them would assume his mantle. Interesting. So Ben did that, but if for the crowd of people who wanted her to go to the dark side, if the two of them had banded together and she, she had to go to the dark side to harness the power to do it, yeah, and she takes over and Ben realizes when he's no longer under his hole that that's where he, if they had done a role reversal thing, that could have been kind of cool. Yeah. I still like the way it went down. Yeah, and me too. I was still close enough. I he killed him and then yeah. took him. Well, and then, then the, now the more I think about it, though, too, though I'm kind of it's good that they did that and they didn't. They he didn't become like the you know the ending of the third and final movie because if you do that, you are just you're reproducing the the exact same you know Emperor Vader, Snoke, Kylo. Like you're doing it in like in the Jedi scene. Okay, they're gonna kill the Emperor in this movie and like the Emperor makes his first real appearance in this movie and like, not just that, but even though. It's weird. It's, it's, it's almost a self-fulfilling prophecy where he's the Jedi, the Sith, the good, the bad, rebellion, all this sort of stuff. Kill it all, leave it behind, and it's become something better. Even if he's casting off the shackles of what being a Sith means, he did follow the Sith plan. He mm. murdered his mentor. Yeah. Which is cool because it's the first time we've actually seen that happen. Darth Vader killed the Emperor, but it wasn't to assume his mantle. He was doing it to redeem himself. Right. This is the first time we always hear there can only be two. It's the rule of two for the Sith. Yeah. And either the Master or the Apprentice will kill each other. We heard Sidious most likely tell his own story that we right. didn't see it. And it's just kind of speculation. It right. could have been a different Sith. Well, and there's also, there's still the curious thing of like, who is Snoke? Is it Plagueis? Like, Although they, they, they pretty seriously debunked that. Did they? Because the, everyone was speculating it. So much like they came out and literally said, "Oh, that's good." It's not him. This okay. was a, a year or two ago. That's cool. I appreciate that. Yeah, I think that's like the, like everyone's like, "Listen, we get how it fits. It yeah. would be a cool thing." That's not what this is. Okay. Like, well, it's good. Um, but it was cool to finally see the apprentice win. Yeah, and assume that assume title the position. <laughs> no. <laughs> um, so when he, uh, so it's funny because like you have Ray says that she saw Kylo turn. In her vision, right? And Kylo says that he sees her standing by him. And his. It's it's not set in stone. That could still happen. Not just that, but also it's, to, to quote Ben Kenobi, from a certain point of view. Both of them kind of did see the well, things carried out kind of the way they said. She said, I know there's, there's still conflict in you. You'll turn. The conflict allows him to kill Snoke. So that Snoke will not kill her. But right. he doesn't turn. And he says, you'll stand with me. The two of them stand side by side and fight their way out of that thing. Yeah. But she ultimately rejects his offer. So from a certain point of view, the, both of their prophecies came true. Right. Right. Or, it could be setting up something going forward. But right. even That's now, really technically they kind of satisfied, to a certain extent, what they saw. Yeah, which leaves it, which is good. Because like that leaves it so like... I, I like that bit of it because you could take it that way for now. Like it, you could just accept that as being a, it case. won't be offensive that later on if if it yeah. doesn't happen. It's like, well, you guys lied about that. Well, right. no, from no, a certain no, point yeah, of view, like that's what happened. Yeah, ex exactly. But I, I it feel also like leaves it's, it open. It's, it's a cool little open ending thing. If like, I feel like I that seems like a smart thing to do if they're not fully set on what they want to finish this off with. Yeah. Because it's like, okay, let's not paint ourselves into any corners, but let's not leave any loose ends because people are going to call our, call us out on this shit. Mm -hmm. So like, that's a, that that's clever because like that's I I'm seeing that thing right there. Like that is a that's a thing that you can use if you need to. Yes. It's there. Doesn't have to be there. It's cliffhanger ish without being a cliffhanger because yeah. an it's outright like, cliffhanger is often offensive. Yeah. It was it was it was solid. I really like that. I uh, because there, there is like imagine that she does join him in some way, right? Um. Other characters have exhibited force-like abilities, right? We already we've talked about this a couple of years ago with Finn being able to wield this lightsaber, kind of like it's second nature. And Poe's piloting, Poe's, which is so apparent in this is movie, the, is the best we've seen since Anakin Skywalker, right? Which is even better than Luke, who was excellent. Although that's more, I think, just a picture of the time that the movie was being made in, right? Um, because we've seen Anakin and Luke both. Just being great pilots, but part of it is because of their abilities with the Force allows them to do things that mere mortals can't do. Right. Because Han is considered an excellent pilot, but he can't do any of the things that they do. Right. It's and even Rey, being 
a complete novice, the stunts she takes the Falcon through, he's doing even more impressive things with an X-Wing. Maybe yeah. he's trained, but that is he someone who's possibly Force-sensitive that, like, Leia never activated the powers? Yeah. Until oh, now? Man. Which, that was cool as shit. Yeah. Oh, my God. But, okay, so, the, but the other piece of this, though, is uh, Poe also shows other connections to the Force um, in his way of thinking. He's, the, the, the question about, was it good luck? Like he, he, okay. he's, oh, I heard, I heard luck. You said luck. I know, I know luck. This is force. Like, this is the force. We'll use the force. Right. We'll use the, <laughs> was this a good thing or a bad, like, oh, was it good, like, like. Good luck what, or bad luck. Figuring out. I'm not if, sure. If, if, is this plan, gonna, is this plan something we should follow through on? Yeah. Like, that's like, he, I feel like he's taking stock in, in the force. Like, cause he, he's very close with Leia. Yeah. You know, like he's, he sees it. He understands, like, it's a thing. He respects it. It's cool. Yeah. I really, I really like that. And I want to see. I just want to see where that goes. I'm curious. I they really could turn the whole thing on its head in the next movie if they wanted to. This is making me think of just talking about this and thinking about some of the stuff said in the movie. Going forward for episode nine, not wondering whether uh, does this one turn, does that one stand within this and that. Does this story end with a mutually assured destruction? Do Ray and Kylo both have to leave this world together? Maybe. If because. We've seen the Force awakens, right? Right. The Force was awakening and awakened in her. His power is getting stronger and stronger. Snoke says in this one, I told him as his power increased, so would that of the light. I assumed it was Skywalker. Seems I was wrong. It's you. Yeah. And he says the whole thing. There has to, He goes, as the darkness rises, so must the light to meet it. Yeah. So if the two of them are going to continue to rise in power, rise in power, if one of them is defeated, can we leave the other one unchecked? Right. Whether it's total good or total bad. No. Does this end with them having to kill each other? I think it I, I do think it might end in some way like that because the reason he comes about is because Luke is around, I feel. What's that? The reason Kylo Ren becomes this consumed by the darkness is because Luke is like he's the it's it's out of balance. Yeah. Luke's training Jedi, he's he's making the light a lot. And it's like all right, the dark side's like, no, fuck my shit. And he's like, <laughs> and like, but it overcorrected. Right, but and it, that's it, what spawns Ray's awakening. Right, so it's like this: the scale is constantly, it's like going like yep. up and down, up and down, up and down, and like if it evens out, it would be the it would be them ending it all. That's what I'm of. saying. So yeah, that could be really. It's cool. the only way that this story can end because they're not just going to r- race off to opposite ends of the galaxy. Does it end with we reset the whole thing and the two of them both have to die and the force is distributed evenly across the galaxy? I don't know, but that'd be really cool. Be sad, but it could be, but yeah. In the right hands, though, it'll, I'm sure it would be a beautiful <laughs> story it to tell. It certainly could be, yeah. Ah, that's exciting. Let's talk. Let's just talk about all the deaths in this. this we're talking about let's life and death, and we've mentioned a couple of them. We talked about snow. People we die about... in this movie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the last Jedi died. He did. Rest in peace, Luke. Both of one of our favorite characters from our youths. Yeah. Or youths, if you prefer. The youths. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I, I, I'm I'm glad that he died. I'm glad that they they saw his character through and he's done. Oh, I thought that I was glad with how they handled his death. I'm yeah. not glad he died. I always yeah. more Luke Skywalker. Yeah, okay, uh, kind I still of. wish we could have got a little bit more Luke action. I do. I uh, we talked a little bit about this offline, but like the it bringing in this new era of Star Wars. If you can get Christopher Lee to look like he's fucking shit up. You can get. That's true. Mark Hamill. No, no, but I'm, I'm he's like twenty or thirty years younger than him. You're trying to like you're, you're ushering in this new age of of movies and storylines. It's it, it's time for them to go. I will confess, I viewed this with a certain bit of naivete because with Carrie Fisher's death in real life, we're not going to see that character right going forward unless they they said they aren't going to CGI or anything. It's possible maybe they could find a way to work clipped footage from this one. Yeah. To be used, as, maybe as some sort of a way to say goodbye, like she's off doing something, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. But she's not going to be a real part of the movie going forward. So I assumed that gave Luke a certain degree of plot. I knew he could possibly die in this movie. Because mm-hmm. it would fit in a, any number of ways, a redemption arc for him. Yeah. Um, but selfishly, I wanted him to survive, and logically... You lose Han in one. You lose Carrie Fisher. You want Luke to survive to the to the last one to continue guiding this whole thing. But 
the the line from the trailer about this isn't going to go the way you expect. Yeah. And the line that keeps getting fed over and over by Ben Solo, kill the past. Yeah. They've killed the past fully and officially now. Yeah. The only connection point we have to the old stories now is C-3PO and R2-D2. And they've largely taken a back seat. Oh, well, you know, you have, <clears throat> you have Chewie. Yeah, but I don't think Chewie's going to take a, a huge role going forward. There's not much need. Anymore. Oh, if that's He's always mean, played that's, second that, fiddle that, to someone that's else. That's fine, yeah. He doesn't, have, like, he can, he could be phased out of it and, like, not. That's like, what I'm they saying. Don't, they don't have to kill him or anything no, like that. No, he could just, just kind of go off on a mission or he's yeah. just an art advisor. No, even, we even lost Admiral Ackbar in this. Yeah, we did. I kind of almost missed it. Like, it was one of those things where I was like, wait, was he on the bridge? Isn't that? No, but then I realized it the second time they, were, they say yeah. Admiral Ackbar. This person, that person, yeah. the oh, entire executive staff is gone. Guys, I know your eyes are on Leia in case you missed it. Squid guy's gone too. Ah. <laughs> it's a trap in heaven. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. Cheers to Akbar. <laughs> so we got uh, Akbar. Done. Luke. Done. Snoke. Snoke. <laughs> Outskis. <laughs> the- By the way, I caught the hand. It wasn't the hand that he was leaning on the whole time, though. It was the other hand. It was the other hand. I didn't realize. Yeah. I, I was but focused it was, on... It was there, and I watched the scene where he hit the top of him and falls off the chair, and you see it just sitting there. I'm like, oh, yep. that's so gross. <laughs> Not just that, but just the super close-up and on his dead face with like, with, his like the tongue, tongue out. hanging oh, out. Oh, my God. Like, it's like, that's gross, man. <laughs> yeah. It's kind of funny, though. Oh, it is. It's, it's, like, it's well handled. It's like, screw this guy. Also, low-key great Hux moment. When he walks into the throne room, yeah. thinks that Ben is dead or near death, and is like, mm, let me make sure I just finish yeah. the job, because fuck that guy. Yeah. <laughs> As he reaches into his jacket and pulls the pistol, and Ben goes, ah! yeah. and he just like slowly covers it up with his jacket again. <laughs> That's well done. I feel like that'll play, continue to play a role. Also, I do kind of like that he's just decided to make him his personal bitch boy now. Yep. <laughs> he force choked the shit out of him. Snoke told him, he's like, you want to keep this guy around. Throws him, you, manipulate you know. manipulate the shit out of him. <laughs> throws him across the room because he said something he didn't like, like yeah. all this sort of stuff. That was the, that scene was like, it's almost as if they just, uh, they they were able to like palette swap the characters and mm-hmm. it was the Hulk punching Thor. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That yeah. was pretty great though. I, um, I, um, I didn't, I was confused by the line the first time I saw it, but the second time I realized, and it's kind of what you were just alluding to there, what Snoke says about, you may wonder why I keep a rabid cur yeah. like at, by my side, because when used properly, it's a sharp tool. I didn't realize he was talking about yeah. Hawks. Yeah, who's still kind of in the room. <laughs> yeah, that's why I was confused. He's still walking away. Like, he can clearly hear you. <laughs> like, I wasn't sure if he was insulting bend to his face right. or if he was talking to Hux the, well, the first time I was like, I was like which one of them is he talking yeah. about or is he did I miss did he not say curve did he say something Either else way, like, this missing? is rude <laughs> and then once I watched it the second time I was like no no he's 100% talking about Hux yeah <laughs> oh man other folks that die all the dudes in red they don't die they get murder balled <laughs> it's crazy <laughs> but at least they actually get to sh- show up you know what they did they were significantly more useful than the three Jedi Masters that get murdered at the end of Revenge of the Sith. Yeah. They just kind of... Utterly ridiculous. These guys fight. Yeah. What's funny, though, is they have nothing to fight for. <laughs> no? Yeah, that's something you expected before Snoke died, not after. Right. Right. I guess it's like kind of the last... It's probably part of the whole warrior monk thing. They were very yeah. much like modeled after the, the samurais and stuff like that, so... But, like, so we got, we got a couple of really cool things. Uh... We get a straight up decapitation scene. Like he like swings around, he's fighting three guys at once. Swoop. Let's all right. The three of you, that's too many. Let's take this guy's head off, and then yep. they fight the other two. We get the scene where uh, the, where Ray is is held up, and she drops the lightsaber, that's and then there's cool. the back, which is alluded to when she does the backward slash at the rock. Yeah. Earlier, like when she's practicing, like she's like figured that motion out, mm-hmm. and she she. She actually does it, which is awesome. Like, she, like, slices his legs and then his top, and he yeah. goes down. That was great. Ignition. Oh, my God. The to- But not just the fact that they... Like, that's a thing I feel like as a kid playing video games, like, I, I've, like, done. Like, oh, like, they don't do this in the movie, but I'm just going to walk up to this character in the game, and I'm going to turn the lightsaber on and off and kill them. Like, yeah. This, this is pretty efficient. They've never really done that, I feel. And um, so when she tosses it to him... The closest thing to that was also Ben doing it to Han. Right, right. 
the, even that was a little different. Because mm-hmm. it was it was still more like, and it was like there for a yeah. while. This was like a, a, t- a quick tap on Boop. off. Yeah. <laughs> but like, what's great about it is he's flipping the switch on the soundtrack, which is amazing. Was it? The music is swelling. Oh yeah, right? yeah, yeah. It's crazy battle yeah, it music. Goes, they're fighting. They're fighting. They're fighting. It turns it off. I was like. When I I noticed that more this time around, like that's why that scene is so crazy. Like one, that's a really badass way to kill the last one. Two, it's a hard stop to the battle. <laughs> it's just like, <laughs> it's like that was awesome. <laughs> it's <was> so cool. <laughs> yeah, but all those guys, they didn't make it. Uh, we're talking Rose's about the sister, death. We're talking about the death it. of Haldo. Her name is Paige Tycho or Tico. I Tico. I looked it up. Um, I I found it, but it was like past when we were like looking for it. She the went down in a blaze of glory. Admiral Haldo we had. We had the death of Anakin Skywalker's lightsaber. Yeah. Another connection point from the past that we've destroyed. And our which first that view, one I really like from a narrative standpoint. Our first view of a crystal on screen, right? Did we see a crystal in Rogue One? I forget. Did we see a big crystal like from uh, like a little blaze away? Maybe. But this is the first time we've seen like one in the lightsaber, lightsaber this and that. Like, which is kind of cool. I, I, I was the same I material, that. but... Yeah. That was that was that was kind of fun because it's like this this thing that's like it, you, it's like it lore and it's there and you but we saw one because yeah. like it's and it's we saw the one the inside of his yeah. life that's cool that was a cool scene I was wondering about that as it was going on I was like does this end with like was like the lightsaber get broken does it get blown up is does something distract one of them and that's who gets the lightsaber right uh, is is Luke gonna finally walk into the scene and like the distractions gonna cause like like what's gonna happen here right. I, I was really sure Walk was gonna Luke was gonna walk into the throne room at some point that's like that whole sequence yeah even pre-Snoke dying I was like and now yeah <laughs> and now <laughs> <laughs> like especially like like it reached like kind of like a fear pitch for me when it was well you know why because it reminded me like in that scene with like her being choked down and stuff like that I was, it reminded me of um, when Yoda walks in with Dooku after mm-hmm. he's defeated Obi-Wan and Anakin mm-hmm. um, I was thinking the, kind of the same way because the long hallway would have been perfect to shot from the back you just see a hooded figure walking into the room no one really notices and then he announces himself to save the day more or less right. maybe that's where he sacrifices himself that could be cool you know or when the two of them are in like the worst possible situation where they're both being pinned down by those guards like and Luke now right, right. <laughs> yeah no, but the but death the, of Anakin's the, the, lightsaber, the lightsaber is I think important for a lot of reasons it's, like, it's another killing the past yes it's killing Anakin Anakin's story is done now yeah, I mean he's got a grandson that's alive, but like, that's it. It's it's really cool because it, it's also like we're not we're not beating around the bush here. Nine is coming out, and this nine movie saga is coming to a close. Yeah, like that's awesome. That's the thing is, if they make an episode 10, 11, 12, it's not gonna be in five years after episode nine. No, those people don't want to come back and do it. She's even came out and said like, I'm, like I might be interested in coming back, but like. I want to do it the way that Luke did, like, 30 years from now. Like, I don't want yeah. to do it. Like, I want to do other things. Like, I love doing this, but this is this story is being told, and it's got an end point, and then we'll see from there. But, like, yeah. I'm not planning on jumping right back in, and I don't think anyone else is either. And that's right. and probably the right way to do it. Like, give us other Star Wars things. There's a Star Wars TV show. There's this separate trilogy of movies coming out. Give us episode 10 in, you know, 10 years after, instead of 30 years after. Right. You know what I right. mean? Like... Crazy, I, I I just love it. I love that it's in Disney's hands. Yeah. So that's so awesome. So I I, I don't know. I thought and and also there's the whole thing with the, the path of the Jedi becoming a true Jedi Knight. She's basically reached it, but one of the key points of becoming a Jedi Knight is you have to construct your own lightsaber. Mm-hmm. So she can't she can't use Anakin's lightsaber forever. Right. So I liked that from that point too. What what a uh, what color <clears throat> do you think hers is gonna be? That was fuck. I forgot to look it up yeah. while we're talking about it. Um, the what the the whole thing with um. um but I, I I don't know. It could be a blue or a green, most likely. Yeah, I feel like a green would be cool. <laughs> Sorry, I'm trying to see if I can find. Damn, I should have looked this up before. Um. I've got a. Uh, there's a scene that I'm not sure. I I thought I saw it last night, and I looked closer today, and I still thought I saw it. When the Tie Fighters shoot the ship and Leia gets sucked out, mm-hmm. the both of those Tie Fighters end up going down. Do they? After that scene, they swoop around, and Kylo's 
ship is behind them. Like they're flying like a like a reverse, like a V, but he's not in the front. He's behind. Mm-hmm. Um, and one of them gets shot by this other sh- the other ship, the other uh, rebel ship, yeah. like the big one. Shoots one of them. But they, when they turn the corner, it looks like he shoots one of the other ones down. It like, wouldn't be surprising, like considering an in the moment he he's wasn't pissed. gonna make the shot. Yeah, and he's just like he's, and he also he's known to to rage out. <laughs> so I, I, want to, I want to Sunday when I go see, I'm gonna really pay close attention to see where the laser blast comes from. But I'm pretty sure he shoots that other Tie Fighter down, which is kind of cool. It's entirely possible, and it would definitely it fits fit. Yeah, for sure. Uh, but I was. That that one that one caught me by surprise, and I was like, "Oh, is, is that? Did it happen? Because if so, it's very subtle." Um, what was the? You said there was a three D scene that you liked. What was that? Yes, at the end, and this is another thing about the whole journey to becoming a Jedi Knight. The scene that looked cool in three D is her lifting the rocks. Oh yeah, that I actually really thought cool. that looked really cool. Having seen it two D and three D, the three D effect the, was really having cool. Having the rocks like lift out. Towards you, yes. yeah, that was cool. I, I I appreciate that. That was that was a good a good use of it. Um. Oh man. Oh, here's a here's a weird one. So, I also noticed it the second time because I'm paying more attention to certain scenes and dialogue. But uh, so we have this a handful of times the connection between Ben and Ray, mm-hmm. right? Where they're talking to each other as if they're in the same room, but neither of them are initiating this. It's just happening. Yes. And uh, I didn't realize that he says, you're not doing this. I'm not doing this. This would take too much out of you. This would kill you. Uh, what? This is something else. Like, he's trying to figure out what's going on. But then he kind of leaves it. Yeah. And when, then Snoke reveals that he was doing it, right? But they have that scene again after Snoke is dead. At the end of the movie. When she closes the bay on the, on the Falcon. It was... But Still a connection, proximity. but it wasn't exactly the same, though. Right. They weren't seeing each other, they weren't reaching out and touching each other, but they were connected, clearly. Yeah, and that could have just been proximity. like And, and also emotion easier. for both and of them. Right. But uh, it was just interesting to for them to touch back on that after, like, they said that, you know, Snoke was the reason why these two were being connected so vividly. But uh, it was interesting. I dig it. Uh, what do you think about... Oh, lordy. The sleep de- 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 deprivation. Yeah, <laughs> deprivation. Yeah, I couldn't even get that out. Is uh, catching up to me. Um, what did you think about Leia's force powers? Um, I kind of liked it. Me too. Um, because that was something that I know there was some stuff in the extended universe they dabbled in her having powers and whether or not she developed them. And it was something you know from Return of the Jedi, she says, you have a power I can never have. And he says, no, it's strong in my family. And that's yeah. how he reveals to her that his sister. And But it seems they stuck with the whole idea of her not allowing it to develop. Though, she does develop her connection to the Force. Mm-hmm. Her sensitivity of it, because she senses when Han dies. She senses, Luke reaches out to her and she's able to communicate. That's what pulls her out of her coma. You know, she senses when Luke dies, all this sort of stuff. Um, but it was one of the things where it's like, never training for it and never seeking the power out. It was only in her moment of most dire need that her connection to the Force... Like, yeah. And it may have even been one of those things where, you know, they talk about, like, the living Force or whatever, where the Force is like, no, 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 you're not done. Yeah. We're gonna kind of give you a little, uh, kick in the ass here, like, you know. That, that's cool. I, I, I enjoyed that. I, I like that they did that. Sorry, I, I was tuned out for a minute a little bit there. I was looking at this lightsaber crystal thing. I can't find... A specific thing I was looking for, but basically they broke it down into the Jedi having one of three colors, most likely. Blue was the most common one. Then there was green and, and yellow for the, the main Jedi ones. Basically, the personality and the style of Jedi they were, and the way they were connected to the Force, dictated which way the color goes. Okay, I thought it had to do with the crystal. No, so that is one thing, actually, that I can definitely find pretty easily. And that's something that they changed. All though. of them are clear. Okay. They establish a connection with the Jedi and that dictates the color they become. Gotcha. That's cool. Yeah. That, uh, but that, like, back before, like, um, resetting canon and stuff like that, that wasn't the case, I don't think. I don't think so, but I'm not sure. Yeah. That's cool. I like that. It's clear and then it becomes... Because that was the thing, and that's what I was saying with Rogue One, I thought we saw it, I thought we saw a clear crystal in that. We might have, yeah. Well, for one, the crystal that she, that's what, that's where we saw the crystal. Yeah. Jin carries one, and it's clear. 
That's right. And I think, what's his name? Uh, and I always forget his name, too. The blind monk. He, he, I think he had one on his staff as well. Oh, did he? he? Did I, he? I don't remember. I have to rewatch that movie. It's been... Uh, I, I really do like that movie. I'm surprised you don't like it. I think I've only seen it twice, two or three times. Let's check it out again. I saw it a couple... I mean, I think I went and see it. I went to see it again... With like my dad after we'd seen after we had seen it, yeah, um, and I've seen it one other time. Like when we, we got the Blu-ray, like I, I saw it one other time after that. What else you got? Uh, I don't know, just kind of some. Well, for one, we didn't talk about it, and it was something that I thought was important and cool, and we discussed a little bit off air, I think, or maybe we talked about it last night too. I don't remember. Um, the three takes on the Luke versus Ben confrontation. Ooh, that was cool, right? Yeah, I really like that. I also paid more attention to it this time around just because I wanted to see how different the scenes were, and they are very different. Yep. Like, or the main, the, the most important parts of the scenes are very different. Yeah, there's things in common with each, with each of them. Yeah. With one significant difference between each one, you know what I mean? Yeah. In the, in the half-assed, quick version of the story, Luke doesn't even have his lightsaber. The, f- the first one, the first yeah. story he tells. Yeah. And then in the, um, the Ben version of the story, he's not thinking about it he tried to kill me like yes. he, and that's the way he saw it like he saw it like there's a guy and they, which which works very well with what he says about the fear in his eyes well so yes and no because he you see death on luke's face you yeah. see murder on his face yeah and in, in, he's in kylo's version of it you mean yes yeah and then in luke's version you see despair on his face like despair he's, he's fear yeah. you know like he's like he said i, I feel like a failure well I, no i was actually talking about the first one when he's just got his hands out? Oh, yeah. That, that <laughs> but the was, final that one, I think, really is the truth one. I, well, I think you see all of the emotions. You see determination, fear, shame, confusion. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All those things. At first I was confused because he's going like this. I was like, he's a Jedi. Is he fucking force choking him now? And then I right. realized it was him trying to read his future. Yeah. And I didn't realize that's what or he was doing. Or read his dreams. Um, but yeah, seeing how that all went down... And one of those things, it's like, you already know what's happened because it happened so long ago and you're almost like, but no, 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 dude, like, he, he's ignited the lightsaber, although Luke was pretty stupid. You can see that he's reached the shame phase and is planning to not do it already. Why do you have the lightsaber still lit? Yeah. Turn the lightsaber off. Yeah. Just you know the one thing that's going to scare that dude who's waking up right now? Seeing that lightsaber, lightsaber. on. the <laughs> Hux was able to put his gun away real quick. Yeah. <laughs> Johnny on the spot. What? I don't understand how uh, Ben sleeps. <laughs> People always try to kill him to sleep. Yeah. That's terrifying. <laughs> That'd be even better if he woke up in that scene season with a gun in his hand. What the hell, guy? <laughs> like, stop with this. <laughs> Every goddamn time. <laughs> Can't catch a nap. <laughs> it's ridiculous. <laughs> this is why Vader had that meditation chamber. <laughs> oh, yeah. I think that, that, was, that was creepy. <laughs> oh, but uh, yeah, no, I. Uh, oh, I, Phasma, that's another one that a I will put a quotes yeah, around right. death because who knows? Did Phasma dirty? They'll, they'll, they'll they might Boba Fett her ass and she'll come back. <laughs> the thing is, though, she doesn't have a jetpack like Boba Fett did. She doesn't, but who knows what what she landed on down there? Fire. <laughs> no, she went through fire. <laughs> you don't you don't land on fire. That's what she thinks. <laughs> <laughs> I do think it was kind of badass as much as they still kind of like jerked her around uh, that like. Um, Rose just takes a shot and just bounces off. Like, yeah. this is the first armor that actually did something useful. Right. Like, that know. was kind of cool. I also, uh, that scene though, where he just cracks her in the face oh, and yeah. like it cuts the thing open. Oh, that's awesome. Yes. So good. Hey. <laughs> yeah. Bam. Crack. And he's just so, he, he's feeling himself so much oh, as he's coming up that elevator. He's just if like, he was a pe- if shit. he was a pe- peacock, it would have just been full yeah. of like, <laughs> <laughs> oh, <what? laughs> Oh man, I love this movie. I can't wait to see it again. Again, 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 again. Um, yeah, I feel like we should just quick hit like a couple of these things. Here. Hit me. Poe is he the heir apparent? What Poe? Ooh, to the resistance leadership. Interesting. Because we've lost basically the whole staff. Um, also, kudos to Haldo. That was some some straight shot right to the nuts for Poe. Uh, oh, uh, you're Commander Dameron. Or is it Captain Dameron? That was Leia's last official act, yeah. right? Was to demote you. <laughs> it's, it's like, oh, Yeah. 
You've, he, been, you've been bitch slapped I twice. Think, I think once physically by Leia and now once metaphorically by Holdo. <laughs> he's not. I, it's weird because like half the time I don't feel like he's looking to be a leader, and then there's that one scene where it feels like he thinks that he is the next leader, but this other woman comes in. His and we place. realize early on that he has the talent to be one, yeah, but not necessarily the disposition. Mm-hmm. Um, but he grows out of that as well. Yeah. Um, by the end, when he's like, "Come on, let's go," like. He's showing he's being a leader. He's not being like he's not being a hero. He's being a leader. And not just that, but the cautious thing. Poe from twenty four hours ago would have raced out with Finn to save Luke. Yep, because that's the thing he did. Yeah, permission to jump in a X wing cockpit and Blow start blowing up. shit up. Like yeah. that was a great conversation. Yeah, it really the two was. Two parts of that conversation with Leia. Um, permission granted. Permission granted. <laughs> um, but yeah, and then no, he shows restraint and starts thinking strategically instead mm-hmm. of just wearing his heart on his sleeve and running and firing. Yeah. <sighs> I don't know. I think I I think it makes sense, and I think it's probably they might that might be what they have to do with characters to get there. to yeah. To, That's what I'm saying. Is the combination of those things. The entire command structure was destroyed. Mm-hmm. Carrie Fisher is going to be gone, and we've been positioning him to take on a larger and larger role as we go along. Those three things together, I, w- I would think, would make him the most likely to take over. Yeah. Whether because I, he wants to or because he sees no other choice. You know, here's a, if you want to really start, if you want to get rid of all characters, right? Like, just get, take them out of this of the equation. You could do that, right, for her. I'd be like, okay, like, he's taking over. She's, too, she's like, out of it. She can't do this anymore. Like, and she knows it's time to, to pass the torch. So she kind of just goes off because it's not really any help that she can provide. Like, she'll be, he'll be, like, second-guessing himself, like, asking her probably questions. Like, they like, could do something like that. Although right? she was standing toe-to-toe with him, firing at the the, the command shuttle. That was really in. cool. Right? That just, scene where she's just... She just lit loose. Yeah, like, that, was, that was awesome. It was, like, no holds barred. It's like, bow, bow. I was like, yeah, get it. Yeah. <laughs> that was awesome. But uh, then there's, you know, maybe if they want to get rid of Chewie, too, they could be like, okay, let's uh, let's have you guys take off together. Just, like, you've... you've go be friends. Like, you've, you've lived this out together. Chewie's got nobody. Leia's got nobody. He's got his porks. Let's, <laughs> they could raise the pork together. <laughs> um, that, that, like, that's a thing that can happen. I also figured if they want to get rid of people, like, they could do... Like, re- like usher them out and not, like, kill them or something. Like, they could do, like, what we just said, where she goes off. If they want to, to send off Chewie, we could get Lando, and the two of them could have a little bond and take off in the Falcon together. And, like, go on. It'd be great way to bring Lando back. Like, hey, you, need, you, need, you guys need a scoundrel to do your dirty work for you? Yeah. Like, that, oh, man. I really, really want him back for in some capacity. Wait, can we get a standalone movie of Lando, Chewie, DJ, and BB-8 just... Make it all sorts of havoc dicks. in the yeah. other room. Like, yeah. <laughs> just spaceport to pay, spaceport, like, stealing shit, fucking shit. Star Wars, like, a swindling people. story. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> not, not swindler, a Star Wars story. Yeah. Star Wars, a swindler story. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be great. Uh, <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> I want that. <laughs> the, other, the other thing is, I don't know what the this fucking guy's name is. Um, there's that one dude who looks like General Dodonna from the original trilogy, but it's not him because that guy was old then. Wh- which dude? The dude who steps out of the trench. The old, grizzled-looking dude. Oh. What about him? Who the hell is he? Oh, okay. Is yeah, he a sufficient no, yeah. rank that he would be in charge? He's had two lines in these two movies. No idea. I have no clue. <laughs> like, but he, he seems relatively important. Right. I mean, he's always around. He's always in all the top level meetings. Yeah, I mean, it, it's funny though because it could be Poe could just be taking the mantle up because he's he's just guiding people and they're following him. Like he's not a more energetic to, leader. He's not asking to be the leader. Like they're just following him because he's he's just legitimately trying to save them in that moment, which yeah. is kind of cool. And they, he already he he did have a bunch of people following him to. Like for the mutiny, which was kind of great too. Like that, uh, that, again, that one alien dude who's got his back all the time. Like yeah, like he's got a buddy. That's yeah. his, that's the second in command. Like when he has the whole thing. Oh, Admiral Holdo. And he's like, yeah, he says something in some alien language. Can we get some titles for these goddamn aliens? Yeah, like, can, can we? It's uh, we got, we got <laughs> Poe. Like, but you hear Poe in yeah. there. Like, <laughs> yeah, we got Poe, alien boy, and uh, Carrie Fisher's daughter. <laughs> the three of them are gonna. I saw her name here somewhere. Lieutenant Connex. Connex. Cool. Um, 
Um, blue was it? Blue leader. The, uh, the yeah, I was gonna flying. say we missed her in like the in our wrap up of all the people who died. Yeah, she. They did her dirty too. She didn't even get a good death. Like she just like died in like a freak explosion. Yeah, it sucked. She was, I was. She was piling the A wings, and she was. She was shouting orders. I was like, "Yeah." And she was in the last badass. movie too. She was. She was one yeah. of the fighter pilots in the last one as well. But then, like, yeah, she's like it's just in the ship, and uh, she just sees the explosion son of, of a bitch. Like, <laughs> also, rest in peace, Pose X wing. What badass X wing? I always like that thing. That was a badass. She'll get another one. Yeah, that's sad. That's sad. Pour one out. Pour some. Uh, so pour some green milk out for for the pose X wing. Oh man, is that that's the majority of the deaths, right? Yeah, I think so. I'm sure there's someone. Not I working. mean, we missed about five thousand others from the ships that got blown up. Yeah. <laughs> but, and just five thousand other things. This is movie is jam packed. Oh my god, yeah. We're gonna we'll probably bring up random points about this as we go forward for the next few weeks. <laughs> also, Yoda. Ah, oh, Yoda. I love Yoda. Great, great. Having Yoda back. Mm-hmm. The perfect amount of Yoda, too. We didn't yep. need more. Nope. And, more importantly, Muppet Yoda. Yes. I mean, I could have gone either way there. I didn't really know no, it, but it was cool. That was important to me. It was cool. That, uh, that tugged on the heartstrings there. I love Yoda. Always did. And having him having him back was just really, it was really cool. I, 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 had, a, I had a funny feeling. I love the way he said it, too. Good to see you again, young Sal. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, he, like, and, like, the same, almost like the same line, like, not know what he's doing. <laughs> and like when he hits him in the face, I was like, so good. Oh man, that's nostalgia done right. It really is. It's just it's such good because it was actually service. in service to the plot. You know, it was, but it was, it was for it, it's for the fans. Like they could have, they didn't have to do it. They could have found another way. Yeah. Yeah, but like it, it works so well. I guess it would have been weird to have you and McGregor come back. <laughs> what if it was Liam one? Neeson <laughs> as Qui Gon? Who are you? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just thinking of him coming up with Obi-Wan. Oh. Death's treated you well, man. You're looking great. <laughs> Who is that? Ben? Why? <laughs> yeah, okay. Uh, yeah. You sure? Oh, uh, let's talk about one, one quick thing here. Um, last note that I have uh, about Rey and who she really is. Um, and the reason why I don't think... She's nobody. I was thinking about this a little bit more last night. Um, I think that it was a manipulation tactic. On it's Kyle certainly Ren's possible. Part. And one of the main reasons why is... It, well, one, you have Luke in this movie say, like, no, but... Who are you? Who are you? Like, there's... Like, he... As much as he's trying to say shut off from the Force, he's, he doesn't know there's... Like, I know what he's, like, trying to figure out, like, is it you want to be trained? Like, there's something else to that line, I feel. He's, he, he wants to he, like. There's something about her that he needs to know, but also, Maz. She, I was just thinking knows, the same exact thing right now. Knows something. She said the same thing. Well, she didn't know. No, she something. knew there was something. Yeah, <laughs> because she said the same thing. Who are you? Yeah, like you're. You're somebody. <laughs> you're someone. I don't. Know. I want to see where that goes. I'd be very curious. It was interesting that they did the whole thing where it's. It's two shadows walking and they become one and then it's her. Yeah. I guess we'll find out. If, 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 we're, if she's somebody, we'll find out in the next movie. If not, we're not going to know. We're not... There's. It's just... I'm not... We're not going to know. The thing is, I thought, that, I, thought I saw someone say that you know for sure at the end of this. And they still left it where it could be open-ended, but I thought they came out and said that they were answering it in this one. Oh. Uh, I could be wrong. I feel like they might have said that, but I, I, I don't know. I still, I'm still holding out hope that that's that would seem like a weird thing to me just because I feel like they're playing her up to be something more than just... And not that she's nothing right now, but that there's some sort of connection to this whole thing. Okay. I just don't know what it, what, what it will be. It's also possible that they really truly want her to be nobody because that's been kind of a theme of not all the characters, but a lot of them. You talk about a Finn or a Ray or a Rose or some random kid sweeping the stalls. <laughs> Nobody is who does these things, you know what I mean? Right. Who's, who's so important. Oh, that kid. That kid. That scene of that kid where he grabs the broom with the force, sweeps a little bit, and then holds it up like a lightsaber. Like, not, it's not, he's just holding it up. But, like, the way that it's shot, it's like him standing with a lightsaber off to the side, like, looking to the stars, like, 
this guy's this is the next like it, they're priming it up for like when they everything re- gets reset it's gonna go off balance at some point and this I it would be really cool if the trilogy that comes next is about like this this new age of of folks that have that just an actual new republic they kind of just have it yeah and are able to just wield it almost like, like the kid the kid has no training and he's able to just do this like he that's cool. <laughs> Also, you had said something character. I kind of didn't understand it the first time, or like I wasn't paying attention to the wrong things. Actually, I was having some weird issues at times last night watching the movie, sitting off at that extreme angle. It's just like, things just seemed slightly distorted to me. Mm-hmm. It was probably more a me problem than anything, though. Um, but also, at the time, watching it, seeing, knowing it better ahead of time than coming and seeing it the second time, when Yoda sets fire to the tree and everything... And he's like, you know, the ancient Jedi texts, you know, and he's like, you know, oh, not exactly page turners. And he says, there's nothing in there that Ray doesn't already have. Right. She has the books. Oh my God. I didn't even, I didn't even know I didn't that. pick up on it the first time either. It was only seeing it the second time. At first, because it, it plays doubly like, you know, there's no, she doesn't need the book learning. She's so advanced already. Yeah. She needs the subtle things That's that, how that I he's teaching it. her, <laughs> right? You know, the... About the connection and about this and that, you know what I mean? It's really funny that it's not. It, it is. It, it is in a way that I'm sure as well, but it, it's also very bluntly known. Like she, there's, it's there's a tongue in cheek. It's a it's joke. Like, Yoda's literally telling it, a joke. It, right it's, now. it's very. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> there's nothing in there that she doesn't. Oh, have. that's great. Right. The fr- that the phrasing of it is meant for you to think back. That's awesome. Well, good catch on that. It didn't really click with me until we were like walking out this morning. Or yeah, like this afternoon, whatever it was that it ended. You know what I mean? I like that. That's really funny. That's great. Oh man, what a what a flick. <laughs> you got anything else? Uh, no. If we if we do anything else, we'll be here for another hour. That, this, is, I, I this is true. <laughs> All right. Well, we'll uh, we'll probably touch base on some random things about this movie throughout the coming weeks as we think of them. Um, Maybe we could do a. Maybe you and me could do a roundtable thing as a writing piece for Spin Tune, because we're trying to bring that back. Yeah, that's true. Like a Q&A type of thing, back and forth, lobbing questions at each other. I like it. Yeah, let's do, let's do something like that. That sounds fun. All right, well, that's it for this week's Flicks in a Six. Um, I hope you enjoyed yourselves. I don't know. what We don't have a plan for next week. I think we're going to try to do three billboards. I have to try and see it. I have a fear that... The theater that it was playing at might not be playing at, but... But we'll, it's not it's been out for that long. You I, should be able it's to not play. a very mainstream movie, though. No, but, like, the AMC one, that that, that should have it. Yeah. I saw it in AMC. Okay, cool. So, not well, that gonna, one, but... I'm going to try and see that for next week, and uh, we'll hit that up. But uh, until next time, cheers. <laughs>